Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 66 of the Clockwork Cantina. How are you all doing today? This uh, Monday, uh, which is new, kind of new uh, for us. Fairly new, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we have a, a few things to go over. Um, Daniel, how about we go over... Uh, let's, let's do what we usually do, which is... Um, Talk about what we've been up to the past week, and then we will then we'll do our announcement. That way, we get time people to kind of get in here in the in the uh, sure channel with us. And uh, I'm really excited because we have an awesome announcement after uh, after as soon as we finish this up, and everybody's kind of in in the chat in the in, in it is, on the it channel. It is a pretty cool announcement. It's pretty, it's pretty yes. dope. It's pretty dope. All right. Yeah. All so right. I'll so, let you go ahead and start, Daniel. All right. I'll take so, it away. What we've been up to the past week. I have been watching a lot of movies. Me too. I've been watching a lot of movies the past week. Uh, also, well, before we get into that, uh, I beat Control, which I was playing on stream. So that was fun. That was a really, really fun game. Uh, enjoyed it. H had fun with it. Uh, what a weird game. If you've played it, you know what I mean. If you haven't, then you'll see what I mean if you end up playing it. But yeah, I don't want to get too too deep into that. But anyway. Uh play a little bit of GTFO with uh you know a couple folks like Mags and Majin and them. Mm -hmm. Uh play a little bit of Fall Guys. I, I wanted to get to level 36 because uh the, the, the current season was ending. Uh which means uh the new one is coming up here and that's gonna be interesting. Uh, to see what they do with that, but yeah, I wanted to get to level thirty six because I had the last five crowns to get. With that, I ended up getting it. We're good to go. Uh, into the movies that I watched, I watched quite a few. Ad Astra did that one for the first time. I was very curious about that one. Uh, the Ben Affleck or Ben Affleck, uh, what's his name? Uh, Brad Pitt. I don't know why I confuse the two, but Brad Pitt <laughs> uh, astronaut movie. Uh, I, I I liked it, but uh, cool. yeah. I, I, I know I came in on. at like the end of that one, so I had no yeah. idea what was going on. Uh, re ended up rewatching Jojo Rabbit because you and a couple other people hadn't seen it, and they were yeah, it was the uh, first time I had seen it. Incredible! I love that movie, dude. I love that movie. It's so a much. it's a good movie. It's really good. Uh, and then we ended up watching Moon afterwards, which I had already seen, so this is another rewatch for me. Wait, first time seeing that, what a. What a tr that's a cool movie. I like Moon. And then the last one for that day was uh, Pacific Rim, which you know Pacific Rim is awesome. So yeah, it was a lot of fun. And I hadn't seen that who in a long like, time. Uh, yeah, who doesn't like seeing giant robots fight off? Uh, you know, big ass monsters, right? Um, but anyway, yeah, did those, and then we watched watch Predator. Uh, we watched Predator because I mean that movie's incredible as well. Stick around, you know, it's good, good, knock, good stuff. Knock, knock, knock. Kill me! I'm doing it. I'm now doing it. Yeah, I'm yeah, do it. I'm yeah. <laughs> fucking Arnold is the best in every fucking movie. Uh, speaking of Arnold, we ended up also watching True Lies. Yeah, which was pretty great, along with Big Trouble in Little China. Another, we've, we've, another, we watched a lot of movies. movies. <laughs> I really did, man. And then finally, yesterday, or actually, or no, then we watched the, I watched the WandaVision behind the scenes thing, which was pretty great. And then uh, Hatari, the uh, John Wayne movie from the from the nineteen sixty two, I believe. Yeah, uh, that was pretty cool because that was my first time watching that one. I never. It's seen so that it's one a, it's a little strange because it's like you're, if you ever watch a John Wayne movie. It's always a western, right? But Hatari is yeah. not really a western or like a war mount no. movie. It's no, no, no. they're in Africa catching animals. It's like so weird. <laughs> but I I always yeah. enjoyed that movie. Yeah. And then finally last night I got a chance to watch uh, Raya and the Last Dragon and I really enjoyed that movie. I thought it was really good. Uh I in my humble opinion it is one of the best animated movies Disney has ever done. Oh, I really, yeah. I really liked Raya and the Last Dragon. Like I figured I would enjoy it, 
but I really liked it. I thought it was really, really good. Um, yeah, that that was good stuff. I really, really, really enjoyed it. There's some really cool, really cool, cool, cool stuff in that movie. Uh, I enjoyed all the characters as well. Um, the voice uh, cast was was awesome. Uh, yeah, I I really enjoyed Raya, man. That movie was good stuff. You definitely definitely gotta check it out so we can talk about it, Josh, because it was pretty badass. Yeah, 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 yeah. I definitely need to. Yeah, yeah. And then finally, to cap off what I've been doing, I got hit with this with a sponsorship for my stream, Raid Shadow Legends, and uh, did two streams of that, and was f- fortunate enough and lucky enough. That everybody who uh, who showed up uh, helped out, and uh, we we got to the maximum goal of uh, thirty warriors, uh, which was pretty pretty insane because I I didn't think we would we would, we would get there, but we we did, and uh, yeah. So thanks again to everybody. Uh, if you're watching this and you participated in that, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, that was that was really really cool, uh, and yeah, that was it was. It was, it was pretty pretty great um we'll see what the what the future holds uh in, in that regard um and then the last thing piece and thing that i have here is that uh i don't know if you guys remember but a while back and i mean like a while 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 back josh had mentioned uh he was trying out uh Boy, you know, trying to do some 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 uh, audio drama voice voice uh, stuff, uh, and I hadn't really checked it out until like several days ago, and uh, I was looking through some of the stuff on there, some of the projects on the website, and uh, I was like, you know what, let's see what they have. Maybe there'll be something that I'm interested in. And here we are now. I ended up auditioning for three projects. And out of the three, I've I've only received one message or comment or, or one thing so far out of the three of them. And I've been cast for a project already. Nope. Really cool. Yeah. It was it was crazy because like I did three auditions the day before, and then like the next day I get like oh you've been cast and you know a really cool ass comment of like being uh yo this is exactly what we were looking for let, let me let me see if I can find the the exact comment so this is just to toot my own horn here a little bit <laughs> uh so I was looking through my emails on my phone and it's like. Casting call club, you have a new comment on your edition, and you've been cast for Commodore. And then, so here it is. Here's a comment that I received for the audition. It was, "Hi, thank you for sub- thank you so much for submitting your audition. Not only did you perfectly represent the articulation of the character, the accent and tone is very on point. Therefore, I'm proud to tell you we've accepted your audition, and we're thrilled to have you. If you can find my Discord and add me on blah, you know, he added his thing there. We can invite you to the channel. Where you can check out either." check in with either myself or the co-director on the scope of everything and have access to the relevant sources such as scripts in this case because i i was um auditioning for a character that appears only in what so this is like a a multiple part project right so the one that i was auditioning for was the part for a character in part four uh which is a commodore the character is called the commodore so i was auditioned for that guy and so in this case the, your character only appears in the fourth film but because we are implementing some script maintenance, we may give you more screen time worthy of your acting talent. Besides that, congratulations and welcome to our ambitious project. So it was cool seeing that comment as well. Yeah. Uh, in addition to being like, oh, you've been cast, you know, so that was great to see. So there, so I haven't recorded anything yet. Uh, they're, they're doing some script maintenance. So they may give my character more to work with because uh, I, I was looking at the script already. And there's a there's a you know a, a a a couple of lines in there, but nothing too crazy. So we'll see if I get more. Uh, but they're they're working on that. Uh, but anyway, it was it's really cool. It's really cool to to like be like, let me yeah. do some auditions for this, and then the next day later, 
not only do I get a comment for something, but I, I was, I was, I've been cast in something. So I was like, wow, that, that's that's pretty nuts. Uh, but anyway, it's that pretty was cool. pretty dope. Yeah, that was pretty dope. So I'm looking forward to doing that. Uh, that'll be real fun, and I'll be sure to, uh, you know, post the 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 the, the fan film or, or when it's when it's done and everything on on my Discord and let you guys know about that too. So hell yeah, yeah, that's pretty much what's been uh, how it's been going for me. So yeah, it's been pretty good. Uh, hell yeah uh i tried to get daniel into this voice thing for a long time and i'm glad he finally checked it out yeah because you got talent boy um thank you thank you you. appreciate it uh what i've been up to is i've watched all the same movies daniel has i played a little bit more of loop hero and i don't know what it is i really enjoy it i played a little bit of total war three kingdoms uh until my empire got out of control and then the other larger empire declared war on me and took like half my cities. And then I rage quit and was like, I'm not going to play this right now because I got mad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but they had a patch of some DLC come out and I'm probably going to play some more of it. Um, and the last thing is I've lost two more pounds. So in, nice. in continuing our healthy fitness journey of working our asses off, nice, man. there's the uh, there's the update on the weight uh, of losing two pounds. All right. Uh, that's what we've been up to. So before we hit the news, we have an awesome announcement to make. And yes. um, some of you know that yesterday I was working my ass off on something. Uh, and it took, I think I started at like 2 p.m. Like all day, basically. And I finished at like midnight. <laughs> um, Damn. Uh, but so I worked on it like 10 hours. Uh, but it is 100% ready now. Um, so... About uh, close to a year ago, like a, a like a like ten months ago, uh, we did a a, a one year anniversary special for Clockwork Canteen, and we talked about our goals for the show that we wanted to achieve before the next year was out. And I was thinking about that over the weekend, and I was like, you know what? I think I'm in a place where we can make this next goal possible. Um, so yesterday, I put in the work. And the announcement is that uh, is that the Clockwork Cantina is now available on Spotify. Um, all the previous episodes are on Spotify now. I will drop a link in the chat if anybody wants to follow the audio versions of the podcast over there. Let me get you the short link. That's the big link. Um, so that's the announcement is that we're uh, on Spotify now. And if you're listening on Spotify, hi guys, Hello. Um, and thank you and thank you for uh, listening. Um, yes, yes, yes. We are also available. I haven't, I haven't done iTunes or any of the other uh, podcasty places yet, but I plan on doing that soon. So I'll get you guys the links for those as they come. Uh, and we also have the feed over on RSS dot uh, yep. com slash podcast slash Clockwork Cantina podcast. Um, so that's the public link for that. Uh, so make sure to go and, and follow us and all that stuff and share it with your friends and get them to follow it because we really appreciate it. If you don't mind, that was today's big announcement. Um, Which, I worked by really the hard way, yesterday. By the way, <laughs> credit to Josh for making this happen because he's the one that, that, that made it happen. So give him absolutely all the credit for making this happen because he's the one that, that, that did it. And uh, yeah, give, give him his dues, man, because... Uh, without him, this wouldn't have happened. So, so, yeah, this is this is really cool that we uh, managed to make this happen. So, hell yeah, this yeah, is, this it was is pretty dope. Pretty dope. It was absolutely one of our goals from the start of the show, and and we talked about it last year. And it was something I was like, you know what, we got we got a couple months left. Let's make this one happen. Uh, so we did. I had <laughs> so what I was doing yesterday. For those of you wondering why it took so long, was I was downloading every single MP3 we had. And uploading them to the RSS feed so that they would show up on the uh, Spotify link. Now, what's funny is if people had searched for the Clockwork Canteen on Spotify, they would the cat would have been out of the bag because it was on there already. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, that's today's announcements. Uh, we we will probably post Discord announcements of um, the Spotify link and the other RSS. Uh, podcast link and then all the others as they as they come forward uh but it's really exciting i hope that it helps us grow um 
the other kind of change is this: if you are an MP3 listener, is that I am going to not. I'm not. Look, there, we had 65 episodes, guys, and some of those episodes probably are not the best quality, especially those early days, because I was because I was looking at the videos too as I was downloading each episode. <laughs> um, and like, oh my god, my camera was awful in those early days. This it, like the lighting was just terrible. It was so dark. And it just yeah, the, did not look very good. <laughs> the uh, the audio and the and the video and stuff is not not the best in the early days. That's for sure. So if, so if you're watching those early episodes, first of all, thank you for watching those early episodes. And I take Second my hat of off all. to you. <laughs> <laughs> Second of all, uh, sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Second of all, sorry. And third of all is, uh, from now on with the MP3 versions, I'm gonna go through and try to edit them a little bit. Um, before I upload them, so they might be uploaded a little bit slower than they were before, but I think that it'll have a better quality jump in it. It'll be worth um, it, yeah. uh, Because uh, I want to kind of cater to the, uh, and to those listeners a little bit more, um, if they check it out. Uh, we can also check the analytics and stuff on all of uh, that as well now, which is very nice. Um, so that's it. That's the big announcement. We achieved one of our big goals, guys. I'm so excited. Oh, yeah. Um, Hell yeah, man. Um, so please, uh, I'm going to say it one last time to sell out. Please share the Spotify link with your friends, with anybody you think that would like the show. Because, like, who doesn't have Spotify now, right? Right. Everybody uses Spotify. Come on now. Um, so please, absolutely please, we would appreciate the support. And let me just go ahead and tweet and Facebook these things out there. But yeah, that's that's the big uh, big announcement that Josh has been working on. Uh, again, give him give him the credit for that because that was uh, that like you said he worked like all day on that pretty much. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. There you go. Hell yeah! All right, Hell on with the show. Yes, uh, this is yes. Now we have that announcement out of the way. Indeed. Yes, yes. All right, so the news. Let's head off with the news then. All right. Let's do it. So, as always, we're going through our gaming news. We have, we go through gaming news, TV news, and then movie news. So, we start off with our gaming news of the week. We have uh, Epic Games has buys the fall guys epic games bought the fall guys developer and uh yeah I, let's see what kind of crazy co- crossovers happen as a, as a result of this right indeed but, uh, epic games has bought the tonic games group the company that owns fall guys ultimate knockout studio media tonic uh, it was announced via a joint post on the epic games blog uh, the purchase is light on details like the price, but it notes that Fall Guys gameplay isn't changing. Uh, it plans to bring the game to Nintendo Switch, and Xbox will, will continue uh, as previously announced. Or the plans to bring it to Xbox and, or, and Switch will continue as previously announced. Uh, beyond the shared vision among our teams, we see tremendous potential in combining forces with Epic, says Paul Croft, Tonic Games Group, Tonic Games Group's co-creator, our co-founder and chief games officer, according to Epic's blog post. Uh, whether it's making our own games the best they can be or empowering other game developers to make their content from a kernel of an, of an idea to commercial success, we know that together we can, we'll be able to reach greater heights. Um, so yeah, this is, uh, this is, this is pretty crazy for, uh, for fall guys. Huh? Yeah, man. Uh, um, uh... We're gonna see all the uh, all the strange I, crossovers. Yeah, yeah I, I do wonder what kind of crazy like crossovers now they're gonna be like, because like even before they were purchased by Epic Games, they already had all kinds of crazy crossovers and and, and whatnot. So that's true. It'll be real interesting to see what they can do now. Like I I wouldn't be surprised if like they throw in Fortnite and all this other shit in there now. You know. Mm-hmm. Well, all the costumes too. Like you could just yeah. make little cosmetic thingies. Like uh, it'll yeah, be yeah. it'll be it's gonna be nutty. That's that's for sure. Uh, but yeah, then season four of Fall Guys, I believe, is like coming here pretty soon, huh? I'm not sure exactly what day, but it's coming up here. I mean, 
I think it's the twenty second. There he is, twenty second. That's what it is. Yes, I believe they have uh, they have it in their name. <laughs> yeah. I was and, looking. Uh, and apparently, there's going to be an Among Us crossover. So there's your first one, man. Uh, oh, hell yeah! <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> yeah, here we go. Oh. Uh. They're, they're, they tweeted out uh, uh, one of the new uh, levels from uh, Season 4, which is Skyline Stumble. A 60-player gauntlet with low-gravity zones, force fields, flippity-bippities, chonky buttons, and spicy light swingers. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be that's gonna be quite some. I'm not... Re- what is even the... Th- so they're calling this new update... Uh, Fall Guys 4041, releasing March 22nd. Uh, they're giving away a fancy burger costume. If you, oh. uh, <laughs> if you fancy burger, them. you say? Yeah, fancy burger costume. There's a little, there's a little tweet uh, that they put out five hours ago, as of the time of this recording, and uh, yeah, there's going to be 50 winners. So if you want to participate in that and get your fancy burger costume, there, there you go, man. L. Yes. All right. All righty. Moving on from Fall Guys, let's talk about uh, this new Ninja Turtle game that was announced. Oh yes. We have a uh, we have a reveal trailer for it. If you want to throw that up for let's for throw that on there, and they can see what it's about. It's um, called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. Shredder's Revenge. Indeed. Man. It's, it looks just like the cartoon grown up. Like I I, I watched it this. Um, we got Bebop and Rocksteady over there. The cartoon versions that we grew up with. The cartoon version of the Shredder we grew up with. Uh, from the when I say cartoon so version, I mean the, from like the 90s cartoon. So for those say. of you. Yeah, yeah the, it, it's like the old 90s Turtles. Mm-hmm. Shredder looks the way he used to. The turtles look the way they used to. But uh, for those of you uh, on the audio formats listening to this, you obviously you can't see what's going on. So if you haven't heard about this game yet, this is going to be a like old school beat 'em up type game for the turtles again. Mm-hmm. And uh, even just watching like this, like not the gameplay, just this little like video we're watching here. Yeah, it looks pretty neat. It does. It looks fun. I'm like just this portion of this looks pretty cool. And I have dibs on Michelangelo because he was my favorite. Mikey, I've always been a Leonardo guy. Hell I just yeah! Like I just like having two big ass swords, you know. Mm-hmm. But yeah, this th- normally beat 'em ups aren't like super my kind of game, but I used to play them a lot when I was younger. So like, I wouldn't mind playing this, you know. Like I, I, I'd, I'd play it. It, it's, it's like it's, it's kind of like going back to your childhood a little bit, you know, like when you used to yeah. play as a kid. Yeah, uh, exactly. I haven't played one in a long time, but I'm definitely gonna check this one out because uh, it looks great. <clears throat> yeah, they also have a Discord and a wish. You can wish list it on Steam now. Yeah, you can. I was gonna say you can wish list it on Steam now if that's something that you're. I uh, don't think it has a date yet, but interested in? No, 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 no. It does not have a date yet. But it's but like I said, it's it's available to wish list now, so you can keep an eye, uh, keep track of that. If should you uh, should you be into that, um, and yeah, I mean, again, just just to you know, restate what I had said before is that these aren't like beat 'em up games aren't super, like games that I play a whole lot of nowadays. But like, I'd be down to to give this one a shot. Like, it looks fun, man. I, I, I who doesn't like the Ninja Turtles, right? So. Right, love them. Grew up with them. Oh yeah, good, good stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, there, yeah, there is a lot of. So <laughs> that that does bring up a good point. Like, for the longest time, people have been pretty like nostalgic about the eighties and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Like in movies and game and uh, games and TV shows and stuff. Uh, you know, are, are we gonna are we gonna start to get there with the nineties now? Because you know, right? Nineties are. 30 years ago at this point so i mean I, I, at one point or another we're, we're gonna have to you know the, the whole 80s thing is gonna have to take a, a little bit of a, of a rest to, to allow the 90s to 
get in there and, and get in on all that uh, yeah, nostalgia okay. and, 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 and the street sharks, the, the gargoyles, the the SWAT cats, all the yeah. all the shit I grew up with. <laughs> I want games of them. <laughs> yeah. Uh all right. <laughs> all right, moving on. We have a uh we have uh some pre alpha uh play uh gameplay of uh a mission playthrough for Elite Dangerous Odyssey, which will be entering into Alpha on March 29th and hopefully releasing by the late spring. But we have a little bit of pre alpha gameplay here. The road to Odyssey. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So I haven't um played this game. So Elite Dangerous, I have played it. I have it. So this is a type of game where usually you're only like in a ship. Gotcha. And like this is this is one of the games that I use like my flight stick for and whatnot. But with this new Odyssey update, they're allowing you to like actually play as a person and be able to leave your ship and walk around and stuff. Boots on the ground. Which is, yeah, which is something that this game has doesn't do, right? Like they've never previously done this. So this this is all going to be new to this game, which is uh, pretty exciting because, again, you look at the cockpit view and that's how the game normally looks. You're inside of your ship. You don't really like you don't get outside of it. You're just inside of it the whole time. Um. So, yeah, it's going to be very, very interesting to see what the, uh, you know, how, how the boots on the ground stuff is going to work out because I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be about it. It's going to be really cool. Well, here we have the uh, pre-alpha uh, gameplay of a, of a mission here. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It, it, it looks, uh, the the walking looks a little a little funny, but, I mean, you know. Yeah, but, uh, you know. That's just, it's, it's still, pre-alpha, it's, it's still, fine. Still they'll, getting they'll, worked on, you know. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're still continuing to work on it and whatnot. I don't know, it's... It's just gonna. I feel like this is gonna turn into like so, such a completely different game because I'm so used to this game being like again, you're stuck inside your ship and that's that's it, right? You travel from system to system and planet to planet and you know that kind of thing. Yeah. And now man, finally it, they let you walk around and stuff. Like it's it's gonna like change up the game so much. Like I have these like thoughts of like. <clears throat> All right, like this this space crew is in charge of this planet. All right, we're gonna go fuck them up or whatever. I don't know if PvP is the thing in this, but my brain immediately goes to like I want to take over this place. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know exactly how this works because uh, I've never played the game, but my brain is like that's what I want. I want to be able to fly around with friends. If we want to do a mission on the ground, we can. Uh, we want to take control of this place, we can eventually maybe add maybe set up like an outpost on a place if that's possible. Or, or things that they might add later as well. Um, I wish I was more educated on it, but instead all I can do is like just watch this video and be like, all right, this is cool. Here's what I want. If they don't have it, I hope they add it kind of deal. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but yeah, it seems... Uh, let's skip through this video a little bit, because it's just, so far it it's is, just like it a is, lot of walking yeah, it, it is an eight-minute video, so yeah, you can just skip through it. Um, but yeah, I mean, for those of you who haven't played this, like Josh, it's a... It's a space sim it's an open world space sim where you can explore and like you know you can trade things and you can bounty hunt and it, there's 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 a lot of stuff to do in the game normally um bounty hunt. so it's going to be pretty cool to see how they like how just the dynamic of things are going to change up with being able to walk around on foot now yeah because that's just a whole nother like it's just going to turn into a whole different game you know what i mean yeah exactly when you when you're used to just being like in your ship and like you know, not doing the stuff that you see here, it's like uh, I don't. It, it's 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 wild. It's really wild. Sorry, I just keep I keep going back to watch as he shoots this dude, and the body just kind of flops on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> it looks really funny. Yeah, <laughs> I did it like three times. Uh, that's pretty great. Yeah, I know it's gonna be cool. Like, like you can and 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 you can play with friends in this game, so you can obviously team up and squad up and stuff. So this is gonna be, like, like you know, 
like what we see here is like these these they're basically like raiding a, a compound or something right so that, like, that yeah. kind of stuff seems like really cool to me uh mm-hmm. i'll definitely be looking forward to doing that with friends and stuff so the uh, that... space space spy infiltrators yeah kind of cool i like how uh the first comment of the video is base security must have been must have went to Imperial Stormtrooper School because they can't <laughs> hit <hate> shit. <laughs> right. Uh that's funny. Yeah, this looks uh this looks fun. Uh yeah, it looks like it'd be cool. Um but yeah, you should I would say if if you if you uh if you're interested in it, Josh, you should get like the game. I think I, I think already it... have it. I think oh, Epic was given a, I think Epic gave it away at some point and I think I have it. I think I have it. Hmm. I think okay. I do. I have to check. All right. but I'm pretty All right. sure cool, I do. Cool, cool. But cuz I was definitely going to check it out at one point. Uh yeah. but then but then everybody's kind of waiting for this update or whatever and so that's yeah. kind of what I was waiting on. Yeah. I mean, I don't mind playing it like if you want to try it out. It's just, you know, like I said, it's mm-hmm. it's purely like ship stuff right now because yeah, once this update comes out, it's gonna it's gonna change up the game quite a bit. Which I'm I'm wondering how that's gonna work because so far, as I mentioned, this is the game that I play with a flight stick and the throttle, right? So mm-hmm. it's gonna be weird for me to be like, all right, now that we can walk around on foot, oh shit, I gotta switch over to keyboard and mouse or something, you know? Because yeah, I'm just so used to playing that game with the with the with the throttle and the and the joy uh the joystick but yeah i mean it looks really cool so i'm uh definitely gonna be oh my god please tell me that dude's gonna come in and just open up with his lasers on a ship because that would just be (laughs) the best thing ever (laughs) so for those of you listening there's like a ship flying over as these two dudes are on the base grounds fighting off and then like Fucking uh, air support, man. <laughs> air support is coming in, and it's pretty dope. So <laughs> fucking, fucking call in the airstrike, right? Uh, so while the video starts uh, a little slow, it definitely picks up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, I, I just, oh. I'm, I'm all about like raiding bases with your friends and shit, man. Like that, that mm-hmm. just seems like really cool to me. And then somebody has to come in and pick you up as you're under heavy fire, like that, yeah. that ship. That, there's an enemy ship shooting at them on the ground. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, it seems neat. Uh, obviously, so yeah, still working doing, on it, uh, but it looks it looks cool. Yeah, yeah. So they're they're gonna be doing uh, alpha on the twenty ninth. Uh, so I want to see if I can try to get in on that. Uh, probably. I don't know if I'll be able to, but we'll see, right? Yeah, anyway, you never know. But anyway, but anyway, this looks cool. And then the yeah, the update, we don't know when it's coming out, just sometime in spring. Um, but I am looking forward to it because I feel like this game is gonna be pretty fun to play. Not not that it isn't already, but like just you're adding in a whole another like aspect and element to the game, you know. Yeah, it's a whole additional layer of gameplay, right? Like it's just more. It's just yeah. more and more just, more just is always... usually pretty good. Yeah. So that's Elite Dangerous, the Odyssey update. That's cool. Um, and let's talk about the the actual final piece of gaming news that I have here. Because, I mean, to be honest, there wasn't a whole lot of news this week. Uh, but one thing I have on here is for those who have played, who have Borderlands 3, is that the, the next expansion has been delayed to April 8th. Gearbox announced that they had delayed the release of the upcoming Borderlands 3 expansion uh director's cut almost a full month due to the severe winter storms that recently swept through its home state of texas uh the update will now launch on april 8th uh Hmm. in an official statement they said thankfully all of our team members and their families are safe and healthy but our work on director's cut was unavoidably disrupted and we've ultimately decided to shift the release date to ensure we deliver the best possible experience uh Compared to previous add-ons, Director's Cut looks to be a more pared-down uh, Borderlands 3 experience focused on recurring challenges, challenges, side missions, and a new raid boss known as uh, Hemovarus the Invincible rather than big story-expanding set pieces. Uh, it rounds out the new content from the game's second season pass. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. 
And that's all we have for our game of news. I actually have not played Borderlands 3. I'll probably get it at some point eventually. But I just haven't been too pressed about getting it, you know? Yeah. Personally. I have a couple things because I uh, I saw this one on Twitter and I thought it was a pretty big deal. Right, um, so I do want to... I do want to... Sh- I saw it, it. Well, it was literally like it. It came out today, so that's why it's like mm-hmm. not anywhere. Um, but Outriders is coming to the Xbox Game Pass on day one, mm-hmm. from day one. So for those of you that are interested in Outriders, I know some some of y'all had like a, a beta or something, uh, or a, yeah, a, a, a demo or something the past little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so I'm gonna read this article is from Xbox.com mm-hmm. by Megan Spur over there, who's the community lead for Xbox Game Pass. And she says, we all got a taste of Outriders with the recent demo. So I'm thrilled to announce that Outriders will be available on console and Android phones and tablets via Xbox Cloud Gaming, uh, which is on beta, uh, with, with the Xbox Game Pass on day one. So if, you have a ca- on, on, so if you have a console or an Android phone or tablet that can use like the Xbox Cloud Gaming and, and you, know, you don't have to buy the game, it's going to be on the Game Pass. So starting on April 1st, not uh, not an April Fool's joke, Xbox Game Pass for console and Xbox Game Pass Ultimate members can jump into this true genre hybrid from Square Enix, which combines brutal combat with deep RPG systems. Outriders is set in the distant future where players attempt to colonize a planet, yada, 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 talking about the game. Uh, but that's kind of like a... I thought that was a big deal that they're coming to the Game Pass on the very first day of release for console. So that's pretty cool. Um, as I scroll down here, I see, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to shout this out just cause I love Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, but there's an article here that says Ghost of Tsushima has one of the highest completion rates among open world games on PlayStation. Damn right. It does. That game is amazing. Hell yeah. Everybody it does. Played it. Hell like, yeah it does. I fucking love that game, dude. <laughs> right. Me That's my, too. That is my game of the year for 2020. And honestly, one of my favorite games of all time, to be honest, that game is, that game is so fucking good. If you haven't played it. Like what are you? What are you doing, man? It's mm-hmm. it is incredible. It is so fucking incredible. I it takes it takes everything great about the PS4, all those games over years. It takes everything I, that was great and makes it one game, and it is amazing. that game spoil forever has spoiled me on loading times, dude. I hate I hate games that have loading times now because of that one. I'm just like I, mm-hmm. I can't I can't deal with this bullshit, man. Like get that get that out of here, man. They load, they load worked some vo- voodoo some voodoo magic on that son of a bitch because it loaded so quick, it was insane. Yeah, I, um, I I don't know how they did that, but it was it was the last great hurrah of the PS4, and they they killed it, man. I I, I fucking love that game, man. I, I, I you guys hear me hear us say it all out, but we have nothing but good things to say about Ghost of Tsushima. So. Yep, absolutely. And then the very last thing I have is just the Fall Guys trailer. Uh, we didn't watch it. We just talked about it, but I think we can watch it just right here. It's only like a minute and a half. So here we go. We got our little beans, and they're running across doing the obstacles, and then this dude gets knocked in like the, the pool, like some water, and then <laughs> we go we go into the future. Looks like, and then there's tentacles, and I make sure I think uh, I have the right video up. <laughs> yeah, you do, you do. Uh, <laughs> I guess you do. Yeah, I, I haven't, I haven't terrible seen jokes. this, but uh, yeah, no. I know. I was oh, I was just man. gonna say too, like what the hell is about to happen here, man? Look at all the neon. There's so much neon. I, I, that's 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 great. <laughs> this is just a cinematic trailer, by the way. I don't know how <laughs> reflective of this is of any uh, of any of the courses or anything like that, or the outfits. I'm sure the outfits will probably be in the uh, game season patch yeah. that thing. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure some of those will be, if not all of them. That looks like a variation of the tail grab game. Um, Yellow team wins. You have to be very careful when you play with Baba because she steals your tail. Oh boy, does she? You don't have to <laughs> tell me that. <laughs> oh, the amount of times, man. You have to get the crown. But anyway, Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout yeah. Season 4, March 22nd. I'll, 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 I'll be playing this. Uh, March 22nd is on a what day? Oh, it's actually a week from now, next Monday. Oh, so I'll I'll be playing it uh, probably on like Friday or something. I don't know. I'll, I'll I'll probably stream it like the that Friday of that week. Um, Bob will be there like day one. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Catch up. I'll have to catch up on that. But yeah, I always like to play those a little, little for a little bit when they when they first drop because you know you gotta yeah you can't fall too too far behind. But anyway, I'm gonna start playing Fall Guys for this last season, right? And it's a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's it's it, it it definitely is it definitely. But is. it also makes me want to throw my controller sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah, I mean. Not yeah, out of, I hate the game, throw it. Out of, God damn it, how could you throw it? You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, what's next, bud? Uh, that is all that so I have. We're, we're done with the gaming news, and we move on to the TV, TV po- portion. Gotcha. Uh, which we have some casting news. We have some... Uh, we have a trailer as well. Uh, oh. But let's start off with... Uh, the the CW uh, Powerpuff Girls show that has cast their their Powerpuff Girls. So here we go. They have their three leads. We have uh, uh, Chloe Bennett, uh, Dove Cameron, and Yana Peralt uh, all joining the show. The Powerpuff live action Powerpuff Girls live action series was first announced as being in development back in August. Based on the Cartoon Network series, uh, but this new series is going to see the heroes as disillusioned twenty-somethings who resent having lost their childhood to crime fighting. Will they agree to reunite now that the world needs them more than ever? Uh, uh, Chloe Ben has been cast as Blossom, uh, Dove Cameron is Bubbles, and then uh, Yana Peralt is going to be Buttercup. Uh, yeah, so. How we, that's, how, we, uh, how we feel about this show. I'm probably not going to watch it. I'll be honest. I, yeah, I, I previously stated that I was just not like. Uh, this just doesn't. Uh, man, it's just I'll just be honest with you. It's a little strange to me. Uh, like, I really enjoyed oh, yeah. the cartoon because I grew up with it. But well, it's you're weird. Used to seeing Pop Up Girls is like, you know, they're like smaller, like. Like girls, you know what I mean? They're not like these. 20 uh, as the dis- the the description for this show calls them disillusioned 20 somethings you know mm. like it's 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 going to be pretty weird i i i don't think i'll be check i don't think i'll be watching this either if i'm being quite honest but i mean like i'll probably watch like a clip or something just to see like how you know i might I check just, out I the just, first episode check, just I watch just the first know, episode i just like, don't know this. man like this just seems like such a weird <laughs> yeah no such a weird thing for them to do but it's it's happening so yeah i mean i i don't know man <laughs> i don't know but there you go they're the the powerpuff girls have been cast so there you go well yeah. uh yeah. that's a thing that exists guys and if you're into it hey more power to you hey there you go it would make more sense if it was live action of Total Spies, not Powerpuff Girls. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that would make more sense, but I don't know. They're they're trying to get out of the, it's trying to step outside the box with this with this show, I guess. Man, I can't wait to see the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! You know what? I changed my mind. Maybe I will watch this show. <laughs> I want to see all the ridiculous characters. <laughs> yeah. Well, <sighs> let me know how it is, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, in other casting news, we have uh, the boys spinoff cast two, their two leads uh, as they as they uh, near a series order. So you, as you guys know, the, the Amazon show The Boys is fantastic. They're, they have two seasons uh, currently happening, and season three is currently in production in Toronto, Canada. Uh, there's no premiere date yet set because, of course, they're still in production. But uh, they're doing a spinoff from the boys. And uh, Jason Clare from The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina and Lizzie Broadway from Here and Now have been cast in lead roles. Uh, the official description is set at America's only college exclusively for young adult superheroes and run by Va International. The untitled series is described as an irreverent R-rated show that explores the lives of hormonal competitive soups as they put their physical 
sexual and moral boundaries to the test, competing for the best contracts in the best cities. Part college show, part Hunger Games, with all the heart, satire, and raunch of the boys. (laughs) So that's the official description of the spinoff. Well, that sounds like a whole barrel of fun. That that's gonna be something, man. Uh, yeah. But yeah, uh, they're doing they're doing a spinoff for the boys. They cast two people, and uh, they're nearing a series order. And and that description you guys just heard me uh, uh, say is is that is the official description. So if that's something you're interested in, then. Then there you go. This the spinoff for the boys, which is currently untitled, is for you. Uh yeah. So we we'll see. I mean, I like the boys. I like I like yeah, the show I The Boys too. from Amazon. It's very, very good. There's two seasons currently. I enjoy them both both seasons very much. We actually did a review uh, episode for uh season two of the boys, which you guys can check out in the playlist. Mm-hmm. Uh yeah. If you want, if you want to hear our thoughts on on, on the show, also now available on Spotify. You know, let's show it out to you. Of course, of course. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're already listening to this on Spotify, then thank you very much. Appreciate. Uh, but yeah, that is uh, that's the the boys' spinoff news. Um, in other news, uh, Star Trek: Strange New Worlds begins production, and they added five to their cast. Uh, the announcement came in a video form featuring the series leads Anson Mount, Rebecca Mromjan, and Ethan Peck as newly announced as a newly added series regulars uh, Babs Alus, Alusan Mukan, Christina Chong, Celia Rose Gooding, and Jess, Jess Bush and Melissa Navia. Uh, they all are joining the cast. Uh, uh, for those of you who aren't aware of the, stra- the Star Trek show Strange New Worlds, it's based on the years. Uh, Captain Christopher Pike, uh, which is portrayed by Anson Mount, manned the helm of the USS Enterprise before Captain Kirk. Uh, uh, Mount, Romjan, and Peck all made their first appearances in Star Trek universe during season two of Star Trek Discovery. Uh, Rebecca Romjan stars as First Officer Number One, while uh, Ethan Peck plays Science Officer Spock. Uh, so yeah, like I'm, I'm typically not like. Like, I'm not the biggest Star Trek guy. Like, I'm. I just personally, it's just never really been something that I've like really liked. Like, I, I like the J.J. Abrams trilogy of movies. I think those are pretty cool. But like, I've never really been a Star Trek person. Um, but I checked out Discovery, and I thought it was okay. But like, once we got to season two and they introduced these new characters, I was all about them. So I'm glad that they're getting their own spinoff show. So I probably will be checking this show out just because I like the, these characters more than the Discovery ones. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I, I'll probably be uh, be watching this and checking it out and seeing how that is. But yeah, generally I'm not the biggest Star Trek person. But uh, yeah, I don't know. There was something about these these characters. I was like, huh, I like these guys. These are these, they're, they're they're pretty cool. I know, Josh, that you watched uh, Discovery Season 2 as well, and I think you actually yeah. like the, these characters too, I, right? I did. I only got to watch, like, a few episodes, but I was very interested in, in Christopher Pike, but mostly because I just I like that actor. Um, Anson Mount uh, is pretty great. I first saw him in uh, Hell on Wheels, if anybody knows that show. I, I keep meaning to go back and check that out sometime, but I never have. It's pretty cool. I, I, enjoy, I never finished it, but I watched, like, the first couple seasons, and I thought it was pretty dope. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I am a, I'm I'm more of a recent, I say recent, just in the last few years or so, Star Trek fan, fan of like the next generation, you know, I was, I've seen like a lot of the movies and stuff, obviously, but, um, I, I, I do like the, the next generation, the the original, original Trek with uh, Shatner is a little much, a little, little, little lot much for me, personally, (laughs) my dad loves it, we've talked about this previously, about how my dad just loves the original, but like it's hard for me to go back and watch some of those episodes, um, but uh, yeah, the next generation was kind of what I was into, which cool, some of cool. our friends are rewatching as well. Yep, yep, yep. That they are. All right. All right. Well, for our last piece of TV news here, we have a tr- the final trailer for the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. 
Let's get uh, which that is up. going to which is going to premiere this upcoming Friday. I'm very excited. I'm very. Oh very yeah, excited. I can't. I can't wait, man. It's gonna be great. Wandavision was fantastic. If you guys want to hear our thoughts on that, we that was the previous episode. So go ahead and check that out. But yeah, Falcon Winter Soldier. We see him throwing around the shield and doing flips and shit. Uh, mm-hmm. Looks pretty cool. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm I'm definitely looking forward to this. I, me I'm a pretty, as well. I like me some Marvel, and uh, I'm 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 about it. Uh, I'm curious where or what Bucky and uh, Falcon have been up to in the post uh, end game timeline. So we see some shots from previous trailers here in this one, uh-huh. um, which is fine because I mean, obviously, we do. I think the show is only supposed to be about six episodes, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, six episodes, each one's supposed to be like about an hour or so. Um, but yeah, I mean, from from what I've been seeing of this, it looks pretty dope. This Friday, um, yeah, this Friday. Uh, we have you know Damn. Falcon flying around and. We have uh, Aaron Kellyman from uh, from uh, uh, Solo, who was uh, Enfys Nest in that movie. She's going to be in this. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, we have uh, a lot of jumping and flying and flipping and all these. I'm I'm, I'm excited to see what the like the action is going to be like in this because there there seems to be a lot of it here, right? Yeah. So I'm curious, like the choreography and the kind of stuff they're going to be going for here. Um, and I'm also going to be curious how. Like Falcon's gonna be using the uh, the shield, you know, because he like flies around and, and shit, right? So like, I wonder, they, I wonder how often he'll be using it and like how he will be using it, you know, that kind that kind of deal. That's what I was wondering too, because they don't really show him other than like when he's training with it. You don't see it yeah. all that much. Um, and then yeah, we're getting the return of Agent Thirteen, which is pretty cool. And then I'm just I'm excited that fucking Baron Zemo is getting his damn comic outfit. That thing looks sick, dude. Yeah, Zemo looks great with his comic outfit. The Winter Soldier, I think, looks dope with with short hair. The I always thought I personally I always thought like the long hair looked a little strange at times, but that's well, just me personally. To me, I'm kind of, I'm kind of the opposite. I'm like, yo, he looks so weird with short hair, dude. I'm, like, I'm so used to seeing this. <laughs> I'm so used to seeing the homie with long hair. So I'm like, damn, like, you know. But yeah, uh, I'm, but I'm sure. This show, man. I'm sure. Yeah, it, 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 it's gonna be fine. Yeah, yeah, it'll be fun. It's yeah, be fun. I'm excited for it as well. It's this Friday. I'm very much looking for. We'll we'll, we'll definitely be doing like a, a review episode on this when it's done as well. Yeah. Uh, Talking about what we yeah. like, what we don't like, what was cool, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So so make sure yeah. to make sure, make sure, make sure to hit that, that follow button. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right, moving on to the movie news here. We have uh, Michael B. Jordan is going to make his directorial debut, and he is going to be directing Creed 3. That's kind of a big deal, man. Yeah, so previously Ryan Coogler has directed the the other two, if I'm not mistaken, and then now he's going to go ahead and direct the third one himself. Uh, as we know, he uh, Michael B. Jordan portrays the main character, uh, the son of Apollo Creed, in these movies, um, and yeah. So, in here's what Michael B. Jordan said in a statement: uh, "Directing has always been an asp- aspiration, but the timing had to be right. Creed Three is that moment, a time in my life where I've grown more sure of who I am, holding agency in my own story, maturing personally, growing professionally, and learning from the greats like Ryan Coogler." Most recently, Denzel Washington and other top-tier directors I respect. All of which sets the table for this moment. This franchise, and and in particular the themes of Creed 3, are deeply personal to me. I look forward to sharing the next chapter of Adonis Creed's story and the awesome responsibility of being its director and namesake. So So, yeah, that's going to be pretty cool. uh, That's a pretty big deal, man. Your first, like directorial debut debut is like a pretty big movie right like that's a yeah it's pretty exciting i still haven't seen Mm -hmm. the second one i need to watch creed 2 um we should we should should check those movies out for sure yeah we should we should i've seen the first one i just haven't seen the second but anyway Uh, but i i'd I'd, I'd gladly watch it again yeah i like a good uh boxing sports movie they're fun they're a good time 
In other news, Kenneth Brana is set to direct Paramount's Bee Gees movie. Uh, he said we, we we previously talked about the the B, this Bee Gees project. Remember when we uh, were talking about the Paramount Plus announcements and whatnot? Uh-huh. Uh huh. So he, so he's he's going to be directing this. Uh, this the biopic will have Ben Elton writing the script and has long gestated at Steven Spielberg's DreamWorks and more recently at Amblin before heading to Paramount through Bohemian Rhapsody producer Graham King, who had teamed with former DreamWorks executive Stacey Snyder and her new company sister. Uh, but yeah, as we know, the Bee Gees is the, uh, you know, one of the world's uh, most known uh, musical artists of all time. They're like, uh, I believe they're Australian or British Australian, they're like the group of brothers that, like, you know, I mean, you, you've heard the Bee Gees. Everybody's heard the Bee Gees. Come yeah. On. Even if you don't think you do, you just fucking YouTube them and you'll listen to one of one of the songs that pops up. They're 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 pretty pretty popular. Uh, currently, only Barry Gibb is a surviving member of the band after his uh, two other brothers are uh, are no longer with us. Uh, but uh, yeah. This will be this will be interesting. I'll definitely be checking this out. Uh, so that is pretty neat. Um, in other superhero related news, we have a trailer, trailer number two for another superhero project releasing later this week, and that is Zack Snyder's Justice League official trailer number two. So on HBO Max, there are already some reviews coming out. Yes, that are like, this is so much better. So I'm, I'm kind of I mean, like, listen, I don't want to get like hype about it, but like it's kind of hard not to. There's zero <laughs> zero chance that this is going to be worse than that turd we got a couple years ago, right? There's just no way. There's no way. This is only going to get better. And I, I everything that I've seen so far, I've really liked. So I'm pretty excited for this. I can't wait to watch it on Thursday. I'm mm-hmm. about it. I can't wait. It, it, it's it looks. It looks so cool. It looks so cool. Yeah, I uh I'm uh, I'm very interested very interested to see what's all there. I'm I'm also interested to see like how Dark Side plays into this cuz he obviously he was not in the spoiler, he was not in the original. Mm-hmm. Uh, or or the I say the original, the other version of Justice League from 2017. So I'm curious how he's going to play into this. It's cool that we see like a Green Lantern pop in there and, you know, mm-hmm. all this other stuff that wasn't in like, look, we're going to get Jared Leto's Joker in this oh, for like no. a scene or, you know, for at least a little bit. So I'm just curious how all this is going to play in. Um, Plus we get that lot- sick Superman costume. Oh, dude. <laughs> Fucking he looks so black, good. black suit Superman. It looks so good. Top tier, bro. <laughs> To me, Henry Cavill is such a such yeah. a great Superman. They did the dark side eye beams. I haven't watched this and, yet, but uh, <laughs> and and yeah, dude, I, I'm just um, I I man, I can't wait, dude. I for those of you who don't know, I well, both Josh and I are pretty huge DC fans, so we're, we are. Yeah, like you know, we have a lot of love for the for the uh, '90s uh, animated shows and everything, but. Uh, I yeah I, I'm I'm I just personally I I can't wait dude this is this is gonna be a whole a whole lot of fun I'm 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 very excited dude uh, that's all I can say is I'm just very excited to see this oh man I know they're splitting it up into like four parts or whatever I mean fuck we're probably just gonna watch it all at once man because fuck it I've been looking forward to this this version for a long time and uh, this is what we should have gotten to begin with. But you know, for one reason or another, uh, we're we're only just getting it now. Better late, better late than never, I suppose. Uh, yeah. A lot of people are like, "Oh, don't get too excited," because like you know, this version of the universe, you know, DCEU, the, the the or they're calling it the Snyderverse, is just not like continuing anymore after this. I don't give a fuck. You think I care? <laughs> um, I know it's not continuing. I know I know that they're doing the Batman now, which we're gonna talk about here in a little bit. And other stuff. I realize that, but I I I liked what they were, the good things of what they were going for in the previous iterations of stuff. Yeah. And 
and and seeing that and and this is potentially going to be in a culmination of all of that so that that makes if it is and then then hell yeah dude i'm I'm here for it I, i'm excited for it i i i i'm i'm gonna watch it I, i'm 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 pretty i've been pretty excited based off all the stuff that i've seen and everything that i've heard and whatnot i was i was looking at some of the uh the uh the early reactions from some from people that i follow and just on twitter and whatnot and like basically the, the gist of it is like this is uh, like a, a hundred times thousand times better than the other one but like if you didn't if you didn't really care for this like version of the characters then this is obviously not going to be for you so like if you were even a little bit if you were like interested in in in, in the iterations of these characters that we had then obviously you're going to like it. But if not, like if you didn't care for the whole, for, you know, just this take on these characters and in general, then, you know, then it's not going to be for you. So, I mean, to me, that's fine. That makes sense. I was interested in the, in, in this, in this version of these characters. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited to watch it. Um, And yeah, I just, I can't wait to watch it and, and share, share our thoughts on this. Cause yeah, I, man. We're definitely going to talk about this on here when, once both Josh and I watch it. So, yeah, uh, something to look forward to as well. Hell yeah, I now. I can't wait. I'm pretty I'm pretty excited for it. Yeah, hell yeah. Uh, now, I was, as I was mentioning, the Batman. Uh, if you have nothing else to say, Josh, or if you no, want I'm can, good. Let's let's free. hit it. All right. So the Batman has officially wrapped production. Now this is going to be like the future of like DC movies and stuff, right? We're having a new Batman. Ben Affleck is no, is was the Batman of the Snyder verse. And now we're getting, you know, Robert Pattinson for the Batman, which I'm also very excited for this. I, yeah. I, I think I must've watched the trailer for this movie like a million times when it first came out. I was all that, about it. man. That feels like it was a lifetime ago. <laughs> but it, yeah. It, I, I love that trailer, but it was, it was so good. Like I, I, man, it looks so great. I, uh, but anyway, they they officially wrapped production. Director Matt Reeves made the announcement on social media uh, on Saturday morning. Um, Jeffrey Wright, who plays Commissioner James Gordon, uh, teased a sequel in his farewell message. He said, "Gordon out for now. One year exactly after the shutdown, some ride." Um, yeah. So there's a picture that uh, Matt Reeves tweeted out, I believe. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, and I'll get the other one for you guys. The uh, the, the Jeffrey Wright Jeffrey tweet. Wright. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, I, I'm just I, I can't wait till we get another trailer for this man. Like, I I just want to know and see more about this movie. I know that in, like in uh late last year, like in September, they shut down production on the movie because uh, uh Robert Pattinson got COVID and whatnot. Um, yeah, but yeah, this this movie looks uh looks really really mm. good i i'm like i like it i like the cast that they have so far as well for this so i'm very very curious with what this version of, of the batman is going to be so that last that last trailer was just that, tra- that trailer was so good man yeah. i even like the i like the musical choice and everything man with nirvana and all that mm-hmm. it was it was really dope I, I i was i was about it and and battinson is just fucking brutal so yeah yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. uh continuing on to other DC news, uh, the Flash movie has cast Spanish actress Maribel Verdú to play Barry Allen's mother. Uh, Billy Crudup drops out of the DC movie due to scheduling conflict, uh, but we have the role of his, but we have the actress for his mother now. Uh, Maribel Verdú is best known for to international audiences for her work in Alfonso Alfonso Cuaron's Y Tu Mama Tambien and Guillermo del Toro's Pan's Labyrinth. Uh, so she's going to be playing the the role of uh, his mom, of Barry Allen's mom in this movie. Um, and Kiersey Clemens, uh, who was uh, Iris West, is also returning uh, for this movie as well. And uh, we'll be seeing Kiersey Clemens and I think the Justice League uh, here in a couple days. So that would be pretty cool. Hell yeah. Uh, Haley Bennett joins Kate Blanchett, Kevin Hart in the Borderlands movie. Uh, 
she is going to be playing uh, a character key to the past of Kate Blanchett's character Lilith. Um, which I don't think it says the name here of the character, but anyway, hmm. she's going to be joining the movie. Uh, in addition to everybody that we have mentioned in the past, Jack Black and uh, Jamie Lee Curtis and Kevin Hart and all of them. So just one more to the Borderlands movie. Mm-hmm. Building up that cast. And then the uh, the last piece of uh, movie news that we have here is Mission Impossible 7 has cast Carrie Elwes, uh, Indira Varma, and Rob Delaney. The Tom Cruise action adventure just announced five actors joining the cast. Um, Carrie Elwes, as we know from Princess Bride, Indira Varma from Game of Thrones, and also recently uh, announced to be joining the Obi Wan Kenobi show. Rob Delaney, Chris, or Charles Parnell, and Mark Gaddis have all joined the upcoming project. Cool. So pretty big cast. Yeah. So that 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 about tops it off our our, our movie news. That is the news, ladies and gentlemen. That is uh, all of it for the past week, I believe. And I need to take a quick break, real quick. All right, we're, we're gonna take a topic. quick quick break before we hit the main topic. Don't go anywhere. I'm gonna I'm gonna put some music on for you guys, and we'll be right back after this. As soon as I find the button, there it is. Hello, everybody. We're back. I hope you all had a nice break as well. Um, sorry, I'm just double checking that I've hit all the buttons right. I think we're good. Yeah. I think we are. All right. Let's hit the main topic. Daniel, this is so, mostly you this week. Yes. This is all you. Yes, yes, yes. So... You know, as we know, March is the month of March. And, you know, when we're, when we're prepping um, topics for, for this show, uh, I, I sometimes, we sometimes try to go into the theme of, like, the month. Like, you know, for October, obviously, we'll do, like, horror-themed stuff and or Halloween stuff. And when we're in December, we try to do Christmas and, you know, so mm-hmm. on and so forth. For, for this month, March, March Madness, I thought, how cool would it be if we did, like, a like a bracket thing, mm-hmm. you know, like a knockout bracket, like like March Madness. So what I did, so we kind of went into the idea. And originally, what I was gonna do is I was just gonna find one, and then be like, all right, let's just do this one, you know, because it'd be cool to like just grab one and be like, all right. So we, it'd just be cool to, to like, here's something that we didn't like, like like just grab something and then go into it and like see how you know see see what your uh what, what how am i trying to do this <laughs> just grab something that like not that like say that we didn't necessarily make it but just like because you know stealing is obviously not great but my my thought of it was like just grab something that like is out there and then like work it you know f- for us in a way, but I didn't end up doing that. So I, what I did was I found this bracket, this web, this bracket maker website. And I was like, okay, cool. How many things can we have? So I made, I ended up making 32, just like how it is in March madness. And what I did was I got, I was looking on, I was Googling like lists of like some of the best games of all time. Right. Yeah. So I was looking through a few of them and then I settled on one that was close to the number that we needed. Cause you know, we need 32, right. And it's kind of difficult to find lists of 32 because a lot of lists are like, here's your top hundred games of all time, or here's your top 50 or so on and so forth. Right. So I found one that worked for what we needed. And um, yeah. So what I did was I went on the, the bracket maker website and then I put the names in there. It got randomized, and they all put they all got slotted into their own, you know, numbers and whatnot. So uh, that's kind of what this is. Um, 
it's a bracket of a list of games that are some of the best games of all time. Uh, I will say that heads up that some of these I have not played and Josh probably hasn't played either. Correct. Josh doesn't even know what the hell this list is. I'm, I'm about no, to I know. I have not seen this right yet. <laughs> so it was a little bit of a surprise. I was debating, like, should I give it to him early or no? Nah, we'll just, we'll, we'll give it to him here live on stream and he's, he's going to see what this is. And I'm going to see what this is. And we're gonna fill we're gonna fill it out through, through this portion of the podcast, and yeah, we're gonna we're gonna knock some games out, and that's what it is. I have I have sent Josh the the bracket, and uh, yeah, we, it's Let time to crown a champion. So we're gonna we're gonna do this in in the typical style, uh, the knockout style of uh, of one one and done. So when you when you have a game you're gonna that you like, you're gonna move it on to the next one, and so on and so forth. And and it's pretty easy to tell what order they go in and all and, and all that kind of stuff. So what we're gonna do is you can either like fill it out in like paint or or you can just say which one you would put in the next bracket in the next slot or whatever. Gotcha. We're going to we're going to fill this thing out. Again, there's some games in here that I have not played. Uh there may be ones that Josh hasn't played, but I think there's a I think there's a good enough portion here that we've both played. So, yeah. Or that we uh, know of that we can I do like, have the right. I put the bracket up on screen just so people can see and for the listeners, I'm just going to if it's okay, Daniel, or if you want to go down no, the list no. and just well, read you, what's you can, up first. You can, so yeah, okay. you, we'll we'll do uh name off the the brackets here. So for the first seed, we have Final Fantasy VII pairing off against The Witcher 3 at number 32. And then we have, for the second one, we have God of War 2018 going up against Doom 1993. Then we have uh, Minecraft versus Pokemon Yellow. Then we have Chrono Trigger versus Metal Gear Solid. Super Smash Bros. Melee versus Street Fighter 2. Diablo 2 versus Age of Empires 2. Assassin's Creed 2 versus Bioshock. Red Dead Redemption versus Ocarina of Time. Portal 2 versus Mass Effect 2. Halo 2 versus Kotor. Uh, Mortal Kombat versus Dark Souls. Fallout New Vegas versus GTA 5. Super Mario World versus Sonic the Hedgehog. Super Mario 64 and Donkey Kong Country. Super Metroid versus Borderlands 2. And then finally, we have Kingdom Hearts versus The Last of Us. There may be some tough choices in here, and they may get tougher as we move along the bracket. But you know what? That's that's how brackets are, man. There there must be a winner. There must be a champion for each one of these. So uh, those are the games. This is the bracket. Uh, yeah, there's there's again, there's gonna be some tough choices, but uh, there there uh, there can only be one. You know, <laughs> like like the Highlander. So we have to. Uh, we have to get 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 going on this. So, how okay. do you want to do this, Josh? You want to do like you do mine, then I do mine, or like do you want to just do like a whole like the top section, the the bottom section, or how how you want to go about? It? Uh, it doesn't matter to me. You've messed with brackets before, so you know what you're kind of doing, and I have no fucking clue. So it's probably okay. better if you lead me and show me the way. <laughs> okay, so what we can do is we can do this. Since we'll start off with the first seed and the 32 seed, so we'll go Final Fantasy 7 versus The Witcher 3. Then we'll go okay. 2 seed versus 31, which is Last of Us Kingdom Hearts. Gotcha. Then, uh, then we go with uh, what would be the, th the third seed portal 2 uh, mass effect 2 portal 2 versus mass effect 2 and then so on and so forth fourth versus yeah that, like that okay okay we can do it like that all right so i guess it's go time then all right let's do it all right so at the one seed we have final fantasy 7 versus the witcher 3 now some of you may be wondering what the hell is the witcher 3 doing at the 32 seed i don't know uh <laughs> this was randomized in a way that some of these games would match up with these other games. Like, for example, you have, like, two fighting games going up each against each other, like Street Fighter and Melee. That makes sense. 
But then, yeah, you got to have games that, that are similar, like Witcher 3 versus Final Fantasy, right? They're, they're kind of like, you know, especially the new Final, the, the remake of Final Fantasy is more like the Witcher 3 and, and you know, that kind of style. So basically, it's just like pairing up games that are kind of similar, in, at least in a little bit in some ways. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I also, yeah, 30, 32 seats for The Witcher 3 is probably a crime, but whatever. You, <laughs> you, have, you, have, you have to pair off games that are similar, you know? So All yeah. Right. Anyway, seed number one versus seed number 32. Witcher 3 versus Final Fantasy 7. That is the first match, the first game of, or whatever you want to call it, bracket. Um, yeah. All right. So, uh, I'm gonna go with the. Uh, go ahead, Josh. I'm gonna go with Witcher Three here, um, because mm-hmm. I, I I personally haven't played Final Fantasy Seven ever, and I played the shit out of the Witcher Three, and I loved every second of it. So that's that's who I'm going with here. Yeah. How about you, my friend? That is a good choice, and also I am also gonna be going the Witcher Three. For very similar reasons, I have never played Final Fantasy VII. I want to, especially the remake. But uh, out of the two choices, yeah, The Witcher Three is just—it's just too good. Like, it's one of my favorite games of all time. It was my game of the year for 2015. One of my favorite games of all time. I love the characters. I love the story. I love the gameplay from the side missions to the main quest to the uh, DLC. I spent a total of 150 hours playing The Witcher Three. And I absolutely adored it. I love my time with it. Towards the end of the game, I was uh, very, um, like, I, I kind of want to be done with it. But that's only because I've been playing it for a long time. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I love The Witcher 3. It's a, it's a great game. I would also be going with The Witcher 3. And some people in the chat are asking, do you have a link to the bracket? I do not. I have the jpg for it uh so if you guys are interested in the image i will post it on the uh discord section of the clockwork cantina and then if you if you're on the server you can grab it from there yes but yeah so i guess we both have the witcher 3 moving on then and taking uh, off deed yeah some may consider this an upset. Some may see this as the right, the correct choice. Uh, every, it, all, all opinions are, are fine. Uh, it's just, you know, we, we both of us have not played uh, Final Fantasy VII, and we both love The Witcher 3. So and that, and that, it was, this was kind of an easy choice for me, to be honest, for that reason, that I just haven't played Final Fantasy VII. Um. Okay. Now we the next the next seed in this bracket is uh the two seed, The Last of Us versus Kingdom Hearts. Um so So you gotta take I'm keeping track of mine on paper for the most part. Yeah, well yeah, Um, what I'm doing is I am just going to um I have this open in Photoshop. Gotcha. And I'm just typing in my choices as we go. Sure, that's to probably a better idea. Also, to do that too. make it easier on myself because, yeah, it. Uh... Boop, boop. Uh, whoop. Whoop. All right. So, yeah, The Witcher 3. Is in my first slot, and then uh, from number two and number thirty-one, we have the Last of Us versus Kingdom Hearts. So, of the two, Josh, Kingdom Hearts, the Last of Us. I know you. I th- I don't. Well, you, you you can talk about it. Which which what are you taking here? I am going to take. Well, I've never played the Last of Us, and I have played Kingdom Hearts. Mm-hmm. So. Even though this is going to be uh, upsetting to some people, I'm going to have to hey, go man. with Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> yeah, you you got to go with uh, you got to go with what you got, right? With what you know, and that's kind of what I know. So exactly that be that be what it be. So if people are going to be upset of that, then you know, 
just it, it's like the Final Fantasy Seven. We just haven't played it. You know what I mean? Exactly. All right. All right. So you have Kingdom Hearts advancing. I do. Okay. So now we'll move on to the next one, which is Portal Three and Mass Effect Two. I have a feeling I know what you're going to pick on this one. Uh, so I am going to make my choice. But if you... Oh, fuck. Boy, I, I guess I didn't say which one I went with for The Last of Us and Kingdom Hearts, right? Yeah, I'm going with, with The Last of Us. I'm going with The Last of Us. There you go. Because I, I have played it. And I like Kingdom Hearts, but I'm just I'm not like the biggest fan of it. Uh, the whole storyline for those games is very confusing. And, like, I only really have fond memories for the first two games. I know there's, like, a billion of them now, like, 2.5 HD remix and, you know, <laughs> three and a half slash days and, uh, you know, whatever the fuck else uh, these games are. But, you know, I think this is specifically, I think this is specifically talking about the first game. So I'll, I'll digress and talk about that, between that and the first Last of Us. And then I just, yeah, I just like, I just prefer the Last of Us Kingdom Hearts. Gotcha. So yeah, Last of Us. I have The Last of Us and The Witcher 3 from uh, top and bottom. Okay, so Portal 2 versus Mass Effect 2. Um, uh, that's easy for me. It is Mass Effect 2 by a mile. Yes, I think My that country mile. All right, I figured that would be your choice, which makes sense. Uh, I I have not played Mass Effect 2, so by default, I have to go to, with Portal 2. And the reason why I go with Portal 2 is I had a good time co oping this game with another uh, streamer friend by the name of Scattered Fate. Uh, she was, she's awesome. Uh, she really uh, helped me out with, uh, with, with this game and, and supported me playing this game. So for that reason, I have, I have good times uh, with Portal 2. So I have to go with that person, you know, personally although i'm sure once i play mass effect 2 this will probably change <laughs> but for the time being because i have fond memories of playing portal 2 with with another friend i'm going that's that's the reason why i'm going with portal 2 uh like i said if i were i, I haven't played mass effect 2 as of as of this recording but eventually i will uh and when i do th that'll probably change but for right now that's what we're going with all right, so you have Mass Effect 2, I have Portal 2. Next is Ocarina, Legend of Zelda, the Ocarina of Time versus Red Dead Redemption. Now, this one might be a, a, a bit difficult for some people. Um, but for me, I have a clear choice. I also have a clear choice. Um, so I uh, think we can go ahead and, and state our choice for... Uh... Uh, mine will be uh, Red Dead Redemption. Mine is also Red Dead Redemption. Listen, I like Ocarina of Time. It's it's a it's a cool Zelda game, and it's one of the best games ever and whatnot. But for me personally, I just I'm more of a Red Dead Redemption kind of person. Uh, and yeah, I just I I I adore that game. I adore that series. So I just have to go with that. I mean, to me, it's just I got I got to go with what I love, man. And that yeah. is Red Dead Redemption. So, yep. Which is not to say that I don't like Ocarina, but you know, you, 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 you're you're pitting into these two together. And listen, there's going to be a lot of tough choices in this bracket, as I stated. Yeah, I'm I'm already dreading having to decide between two choices that I see here for late in the later rounds, and I'm just like, <laughs> oh, I I don't know yeah. if I can do it. Yeah, but anyway. But anyway, so we're both going with Red Dead Redemption versus Ocarina of Time. So there we go. Uh, next up, we're going to go with uh, the fighting games. We have Super Smash Bros. Melee versus Street Fighter 2. Uh, this one's easy for me. Super Smash Bros. Super Smash all the way. Interesting. Okay. I am also going with Super Smash Bros. Uh, 
I have a lot of fond memories playing Super Smash Bros. Melee. I love I like the Super Smash Brothers games. Um, and Melee is probably regarded as the best of the Super Smash Bros. games. Um yeah, I just I, I, I like I like Super Smash Bros. Like I it's to me like I'm not like a huge Super Smash Brothers um person. Or, or no, or if, no, no. I am a Super Smash Bros. Player. I'm not a super fighting game person, but uh, if I am going to play a fighting game, it's going to be Super Smash Brothers. So that's that's kind of my take on fighting games. Like I think they're cool to watch and everything, but like personally, I if I'm going to play a fighting game, it's going to be uh, it's going to be Smash Bros. Yeah. So that's why I went with that. Anyway, uh, so we both went with Smash Bros. That was easy. Now on to the next one. Which is, um, GTA Five versus Fallout New Vegas. Um, I have my decision made. I have mine made as well. I am going with GTA Five. Hey, GTA Five. I'm also going with GTA Five. So I I really like GTA 5. It's probably my second favorite Grand Theft Auto game of all time. Like for me my top 3 is is like San Andreas number 1, GTA 5 and then Vice City. Those are probably like my top 3, right? Right. So I yeah, I got to go with GTA 5 cuz I really love the game. I I love that you have three characters you get to choose or, or get to play as and you get to choose you get to swap between them whenever you want. And, it's, it's it's a whole lot of fun and and even the online which I don't play anymore was fun for a little bit when I first started that and then I'll just be honest I've never played Fallout New Vegas I haven't either so can't I can't say anything about that other than I know it's people's like favorite Fallout game of all time but I just haven't uh, I haven't played it and to be honest I don't think I will ever play it because. It's just to me, it feels like one of those games that I had to play at the time. Like I just, I wouldn't be able to go back and re- and play that one, you know, because it's just an old game at this point. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's respectable. That's that's my thoughts on on those two matchups. Uh, next up, we have Super Mario World versus Sonic the Hedgehog. So, Super Mario World versus Sonic. You're gonna you're gonna laugh because I have to remember I have to remember which Super Mario is Super Mario World. <laughs> that <laughs> there's so many. Hmm. Is it is it weird I'm having a hard time with this one of all things? <laughs> no. No, mm. I, I, that's understandable. I have my choice, but I, I, I can see how this one would be. Because uh... they're both like older games, right? Yeah. They're both like games from like, I think Super Mario World is like an NES game. And then Sonic the Hedgehog, the OG was what? Fucking. I mean, they're they're both old games, so I, yeah. I, I get I it. Think, uh, I think I got my choice. I think I'm going to go with. Uh... Right, what's your choice? Sonic. I'm going to go with Sonic. All right, Josh is going with Sonic the Hedgehog, and to make things different, I'm going with Super Mario World. Uh, hey. Super Mario World is pretty cool. Not that I don't like Sonic the Hedgehog because I have memories yeah. of playing that as well, but yeah, I think Super Mario World is the one that there I'm going go. with. Very cool, very cool. Next up, we have Minecraft versus Pokemon Yellow. Now we have this one's interesting because you have. A more recent game with Minecraft, and I mean recent, like within the past decade or so. I mean, it's probably old, well, 2009, so it's older than a decade at this point. But you get what I mean? And then Pokemon Yellow, which is like one of the first Pokemon games, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. So, yeah, it's do you like blocks and building, or you like to catch yourself some Pokemans? Turns out I like catching Pokemans because that's what I went with. <laughs> hey, Pokemon Yellow. 
I've now, said it before. One, I've never played. I've never played Minecraft. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. This one's a little bit more difficult for me because I do like Pokemon, but like in more recent times, I I've enjoyed playing Minecraft with uh, with friends and and building and that kind of stuff. So I think for that reason, I think for the reasoning of like having fun playing with friends and that kind of deal i'm gonna go with minecraft to make things different but i like the i like both games but anyway i'll go with minecraft um next up we have metal gear solid versus chrono trigger so take your pick i'm gonna be quite honest here i haven't played any of these I haven't played Chrono Trigger or Metal Gear Solid, so I don't even know what I'm going to pick here. I, man. I I have my pick. The pick is in. Okay, well. For me. T- name your pick. My pick is Metal Gear, because I did, I have played that, and I have not played Chrono Trigger. Okay. <laughs> so. All right, wait. Well, I'm going to... Since we have to keep the show on the road, I'm going to go ahead and go with Chrono Trigger to be different than Josh. And also because I know what Minecraft or Minecraft, I know what Metal Gear Solid is, kind of. Um, But I don't really know what the hell Chrono Trigger is. And the thought of not knowing what that is uh, is intri- intriguing to me because maybe someday they'll do a remake or something and I'll maybe play it someday. So that's my reasoning on choosing that. I know Chrono Trigger uh, is very popular. Popular. Yeah, it's a very, very popular like PS1 era game. Um, so yeah, I'll go with that. That is my choice. Um, next up, we're going with Mortal Kombat versus Dark Souls. Oh, that's that's easy. That's that's Mortal Kombat all the way. <laughs> that's super uh, easy. Mortal Kombat. Da-na, 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 da-na. I just I'm 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 just not a fan of the Souls type games, so I, I yeah. Same even though days. even though I'm not super huge on Mortal Kombat either, like I I think it's cool and all that, but like if I had to give me the choice of games, I'd rather play Mortal Kombat, post Dark Souls. <laughs> yeah. Mortal Kombat, you honest. play with you, you play with your bros, right? We could do that at like if we were hanging out, we could just throw it like, hey, you want to play something? Yeah, hey, let's play some yeah. Mortal Kombat. To answer a question in the chat, yes, when we when we're done with the first. When we're done with the first uh, round, we will go over our picks. Indeed. Exactly. Um. Anyway. Uh. Where are we now? We did uh, Mortal Kombat. So Mortal Kombat. 12? Was Dark Souls. Okay. Twelve. So next up, twelve, which is, I think, I have to zoom in because these numbers are tiny. I think it's Age of Empires two versus Diablo two. Yes, it is. So. Um. Age of Empires 2 versus Diablo 2. I have my choice. I have mine. So, Josh, if you would like to... My choice is Age of Empires 2, because I've never hey. played Diablo 2. So that All is right. moving on. That is also the same for me, surprisingly. It's kind of, it's kind of crazy that some of these were kind of the similar on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Age of Empires 2, I, I, I definitely... I'm, I'm choosing that over Diablo 2. I've never played Diablo 2. Age of Empires 2, I have. I like it. It's, uh, you know, I love Galactic Empire, or Galactic Empire, Galactic Battlegrounds, which is the Star Wars version of Age of Empires 2. So I uh, I, I like that style of, uh, of game. Um, okay. So next up, we have, uh, I believe it's Assassin's Creed 2 versus Bioshock. Oh, oh, this is a toughie. That mm. is a that's a good one. That is a good one. But I believe I have my choice. I need to think a minute. Feel feel free to do it. I if you, if you need time to think, I'll, I'll I can go ahead and say mine if you want. Yeah, go ahead. So, between BioShock and Assassin's Creed 2, these are both really good games that I enjoy both of them. I have played them both. Uh Assassin's Creed 2, I believe is a 2009 game. Maybe, and Bioshock is a 2007 game. 
Um, I played Assassin's Creed 2 before I did Bioshock, so it's weird how I played a game that's older than, you know. Anyway, you guys know what I'm saying. But anyway, uh, but yeah, I liked the first Assassin's Creed, but the Assassin's Creed 2 to me is still probably one the bad one of the best, if not the best, Assassin's Creed game. Granted, I haven't played any of the newer ones, Assassin's Creed games, but I played Assassin's Creed one through four, with the exception of the the other two Ezio ones, the Brotherhood and the other one that I relations, I think. Uh, anyway, so I played all of them up until that point, except for those two, and I love the character of Ezio Aditore da Firenze, and he is the main assassin in Assassin's Creed two. I really like that game, uh, and it just it, I I just always remember just the time that I played that game. I had a really good time with that one. I, uh, I, had, a, I had a lot of fun with it. Um, so my choice is Assassin's Creed 2. I just, I, I just really, I just really enjoy that one. So yeah, I, which, which again, I, it's not to say that I didn't enjoy Bioshock, but I just, I just, out of the two, I prefer Assassin's Creed 2 over Bioshock. Yeah. I've, my pick I've made, it, it was not easy. Like this is I've struggled so far. This is the only one I've really truly struggled on so far. But mm -hmm. I know I'm gonna have another one soon. Yeah, um, don't you worry. There's gonna be a lot of struggle ones here coming up soon. <laughs> I'm already like, oh no, why do I have to choose? But we did this to ourselves, okay? Yes. So I uh ultimately I went with Assassin's Creed two. Um Ezio's story, the music, the setting, everything was perfect. Bioshock is also so fucking good. Like it is. Like they really it really really is. So I uh but ultimately what it came down to was the, the character you play as uh for me and Ezio was just more interesting. Uh mm -hmm. and has a, a more complete arc to me. So yeah. Yeah. Solid, solid, solid. Um, we're both in agreement with that. Okay. All right. Next up, where were we? Did we just did uh, the, this one? Okay. Daniel, I believe uh, the next one. T take your time with this one because I need to get up and grab something really quick. Well, all right. So for the next one, we the next one is a very easy choice for me, but I'm still gonna uh, allow time for Josh to return. Uh, so the options on this one is Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic versus Halo 2. And, uh, I mean, I'm just going to be quite frank with you guys. I, uh, this is an easy choice for me. This is a super easy choice for me. I, listen, Halo's fine. Halo's cool. I have memories of playing Halo 2 and 3 with my cousin, who who was who had a 360 and, and an Xbox and that kind of stuff, and we played those games quite a bit. And they, you know, whenever I had to go over to Vegas where he lived and all that stuff. But anyway, Knights of the Republic okay. is uh, my favorite game of all time. So I, 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 I Knights of the Republic is is tough to beat. It, it is it is tough to beat. So. Yeah, for me, the choice is easy between KOTOR and Halo 2. I'm going with KOTOR. Hey, me too. <laughs> Over you know Halo what, 2, Josh? What? Everybody what knows my thoughts on Halo. And it doesn't... Look, KOTOR blows that shit out of the water. <laughs> easy. Sorry, I was grabbing my food. I'm starving. No, you're good. The next choice, uh, since we both chose KOTOR, is uh, Super Metroid versus uh Borderlands 2. So Borderlands 2 versus Super Metroid. Take your pick, sir, and then we will move on to the next one. I'm going to go with Borderlands 2. All righty, Borderlands 2 for Josh. That is what he is going with. Out of the two, uh, I'm also going with Borderlands 2. Uh, Super Metroid, as as was stated in the chat, is a pretty huge game in terms of like 
gaming history. But to be honest, just for personal reasons, I it's just not something that I spent a whole lot of time with. So for me personally, I just Borderlands 2 is something that I played with friends like Josh. I played I played Borderlands 2 with Josh and I played it with the Baba and then you know a few other uh, Jake, you know, like we 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 had, it was just one of those games that I played with friends, so that that's why I hold that one in in in, in but I understand the argument for Super Metroid, and to be honest, Super Metroid would probably take it, and in, 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 you know, for for some of the more other more uh, uh, more knowledgeable gaming historians, they would probably go with Super Metroid. And I, I I get it. I totally get it. I totally understand. I'm just go. I'm I'm just. We're just going off our own like experiences and and whatnot with these games and and for me i just have more experience with borderlands 2 than i do with super metroid but i i do understand the significance of of super metroid um in in gaming history so yeah um the last one we have here for the round one this is going to close out round one so uh we have super mario 64 versus donkey kong country Take your pick, good sir, and then we will be complete. We, or we will be done with round one. I'm going to go with Super Mario 64. Super Mario 64. I played it so much as a kid. I did as well. And I guess, and, and yeah, for that reason, that's why I'm going with Super Mario 64. I played that game a lot. Uh, Donkey Kong Country I played a little bit of, but not super... Not a whole lot of, not as definitely not as much as Super Mario sixty four. Uh, I've I definitely played Super Mario sixty four a, a lot more. Uh, so yeah, again, it's just one of those things where I have I have more experience with Super Mario sixty four personally than I do with Donkey Kong Country. So mm-hmm. Donkey Kong Country again, I I I I I realized that a lot of people would love that game and get you know it's one of those games and game in history that people enjoy and love and all that stuff, but. Um, yeah, I just I gotta go with sixty four, Super Mario sixty four. Respectable, respectable. And that ends round one of um our bracketology here or our, our bracket here. So wait, did we did we miss one? Uh, no. I'm missing the one at the top, God of War Doom. Did we do that? Oh yeah, I think we did miss that one. You're right. You're right. You're right. Got you. So that one will be next. So my bad. I got a little. I was a little premature here. Oh, okay. Uh, we have God of War 2018 and Doom 1993. Take your pick. I can go first if you want, or if you want to go first, mm-hmm. that's fine as well. I already know what you got. <laughs> yeah, this 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 uh, one was an, I, is an easy choice for me to be honest. I had to go with Doom because I haven't played God of War. Okay. And I have to go with God of War because it's one of the best games ever created. Exactly. Uh, God of War 2018 is phenomenal. I, you need to play it because it's it's fan fucking tastic. It's it's so good, dude. Like like I I can't wait, man. You 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 got you got you got to stream and beat Spider Man, and then you True. then you got to go to God of War, man, because it's so fantastic. But there you go. We've completed round one. And to recap, we're gonna go with our picks here really quickly. Final Fantasy versus The Witcher 3. I went with The Witcher 3. And then Josh, you can say your pick. Apologies. I went with The Witcher 3 as well. There you go. So we both went with The Witcher 3. God of War 2018 versus Doom 93. I went with God of War. I went with Doom. Minecraft versus Pokemon Yellow. I went with Minecraft. I went with Pokemon Yellow. Chrono Trigger versus Metal Gear Solid. I went Chrono Trigger. I went Metal Gear. Super Smash Bros. versus Street Fighter 2. I went Smash Bros. I also went Smash Bros. Diablo 2 versus Age of Empires 2. I went Age of Empires 2. Also did Age of Empires 2. Assassin's Creed 2 versus Bioshock. I went Assassin's Creed 2. I also went Assassin's Creed 2. Uh, Red Dead Redemption versus Ocarina of Time. I went Red Dead. I went Red Dead as well. Portal 2 versus Mass Effect 2. I went Portal 2. I went Mass Effect 2 on this one. 
Halo 2 versus KOTOR. I went KOTOR. I also went KOTOR. Mortal Kombat versus Dark Souls. I went Mortal, with Mortal Kombat. Kombat. GTA 5 yeah. versus Fallout New Vegas. GTA 5. GTA 5. Super Mario World versus Sonic the Hedgehog. I went Super Mario World. I went Sonic. Super Mario 64 versus Donkey Kong Country. I went Super Mario 64. I went Super Mario. Super Metroid versus Borderlands 2. I went Borderlands 2. Uh, I went Borderlands 2 as well. Kingdom Hearts versus Last of Us, and I went with the I went with Kingdom Hearts. So that is our round one to set up our round two. Round two is going to be very different for the two of us. Me, we went, me, with, yeah, we went with different choices. So I'm going to name off my round two, and Josh will name off his round two. Since you yeah, can't see it. them, since you guys can't see them on stream anymore. But I'm going to name off my round two, and then Josh can do his. So for my round two, I have the witch. Oh, this is going to be painful, dude. The Witcher 3 versus God of War 2018. That one's going to be <laughs> tough, man. Minecraft uh, versus Chrono Trigger as my second matchup. Third matchup is Super Smash Bros. Melee versus Age of Empires 2. Fourth matchup is, this is going to be tough as well, Assassin's Creed 2 versus Red Dead Redemption. Uh, Portal 2 versus KOTOR. Um, Mortal Kombat versus GTA 5. Super, I have two Mario games going up against each other, Super Mario World and Super Mario 64. And then finally, I have The Last of Us versus Borderlands 2. So that's those are my round two matchups. All right. My round two matchups are Witcher versus Doom in the first, mm -hmm. Pokemon Yellow versus Metal Gear in the second, Super Smash Bros. versus Age of Empires 2 in the third, Assassin's Creed 2 versus Red Dead Redemption. God, that's, that is going to be hard. And for the ultimate, this is going to be fucking hard for me, Mass Effect 2 versus KOTOR. Bro, Ooh. that shit's going to be so hard. Uh, next up, after that, I have Mortal Kombat versus GTA 5. Uh, then Sonic versus uh, Sonic the Hedgehog versus Super Mario 64. And then Borderlands 2 versus Kingdom Hearts. So this is uh, going to be hard, bro. That's, dude, that, that's how brackets are, man. They just you, you have things that you don't want going up against each other, but you have to choose a winner. You have to choose a winner. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, it's crazy, but yeah. So I think for this round, we can just go top to bottom, or you or do you want to go top bottom, top bottom, top bottom middle, or how do you want to do? Well, whatever's easiest, bro. Whatever you want to do, you just tell me. I think we'll do. I think we'll do the same way we're doing. We'll go like matchup number one, which is like the top one, and then we'll go matchup number two, which is the very bottom one. Then we'll go number three is like the. The second to the top, and then four will be okay. second to the bottom. That kind of thing. Okay. Oh. All right. So, my first matchup is extremely difficult. I am th this 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 hurts because these are two games that I really like: The Witcher Three and God of War. I love both of these games. These are these are two games that I love so very much i don't even know i it, it it's like so hard for me to to choose between the two i, I kind of don't want to choose between the two i actually have never thought about pitting these two against each other because i'm like i love them both but i just i think ultimately i have to go with god of war because god of war is just a a a, a whole nother beast man like, I don't know. It's just something about that game. Like, they're both incredible. But, like, the story of God of War is just so fucking good, man. Like, I love Witcher 3 because it's an open world. And, like, you know, obviously the characters are great and everything. But, like, it's a little bit more linear in terms of for God of War. And I don't know. I just, the 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 story that you have there is just phenomenal. Like, not again, not to say that The Witcher 3 isn't because I love The Witcher 3. I, I you guys know my love for that game, but I, between the two, it was a very, it's, it's extremely hard choice. Probably the hardest choice for, for this round for me, but God of War is, I have to go with that one. I respect it. You got to, you got to respect it. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to have as hard a time with this one uh, <laughs> because I haven't played God of War. So I went with Doom 93 and uh, let's be real here, as, as innovative and as great as Doom was in 93, The Witcher was something, Witcher 3 in particular, was something 
just completely different from that. And uh, that is my pick, and that is what is moving on in this if round. The, if those are my choices, I would have done the same, Josh. So yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. hey, man. Hats off to Doom though, because Doom in the '90s was fucking huge, right? Like mm-hmm. everybody played Doom. Everybody was waiting to play Doom. It it was like it was such a phenomenon. So hats off to Doom. If you Absolutely. just got you just got you're a champion that got put up against like a a triple time champion. <laughs> like yeah, it just went us out. All right. Next what, up for your friend. second match. Yeah, next up for my second match. Um, for my second match, I have uh, The Last of Us versus Borderlands 2. And as much as I like Borderlands 2, this one was kind of an easy one for me. I have to go with The Last of Us for, for this one. I respect uh, The it. Last of Us, again, it's just I, I tend to go towards more single player story focused games, and The Last of Us is that as, as opposed to Borderlands 2, which you can play by yourself. But I think the fun of Borderlands 2 is playing it with friends. And, you know, yeah. I enjoyed playing that game with, with the people I played it with. But The Last of Us, the story, the characters, it, it's it, it's crazy. It, it, I have to go with The Last of Us 2, or The Last of Us. For- Respect. Yeah. Um, so, for me, uh, for me, it's what, Borderlands your, uh, 2 uh-huh. versus Kingdom Hearts. Ooh, and okay. I like Kingdom Hearts, fine. But Borderlands 2 is just so much fun with friends. So much more fun than uh, to me. I got way more enjoyment with the humor of Borderlands 2 than I did out of Kingdom Hearts. So that's yeah. ultimately going to be my pick. Moving on will be Borderlands 2. Okay, so Borderlands 2 is your choice between that one and Kingdom Hearts. Got you. Yes. Okay, okay. Nice, nice. Very nice, very nice. Um, Indeed. All right. That leads us to our third matchup, which for me is going to be Minecraft versus Chrono Trigger. And for Josh, it's going to be... Pokemon Yellow versus Metal Gear Solid. There you go. See, a completely different matchup. <laughs> yeah, completely. <laughs> like, like his bracket is from this, like, is just different now. So, mm-hmm. for me, between Minecraft and Chrono Trigger, I have to go with Minecraft just because, again, I haven't played Chrono Trigger. It's something that I, that I am intrigued by, but I've just never played it. And, yeah, I, I just... Minecraft is just one of those fun games that you can just play with friends and and chill and hang out with, and it's just it's just cool. It's just a cool little like survival build them build them up or building you know kind of kind of game. You know, it's it's a, it's a little kitty and blocky and you know whatever you want to call it. But like, in, in, from my experience, I've played it with 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 like with friends and stuff. I uh, I enjoyed it. Yeah, and yeah, it's cool that you guys in the chat are also doing 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 the bracket. Uh, if, if feel free to do so. I posted the link. I definitely uh, want to see them too when you're when you're. Yeah, show show us your brackets when they're done. I posted the image of it in the Cantina channel on Discord, so grab it from there. But yeah, I I, I like uh from the two choices Minecraft and Chrono Trigger. I gotta go with Minecraft, man. I just I haven't played Chrono Trigger. You know, I'm sorry. There's gonna be people out there. They're gonna be like the fuck. <laughs> but hey, man, I have zero experience with Chrono Trigger. And I have quite a few, quite a bit of experience with Minecraft. So, you guys got to keep in mind this is all down to personal uh, experience and, uh, and and taste and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, I'm going with Minecraft uh, with mine. So Josh, what's uh, out of your, okay. out of your choices? What are you going with? Uh, between Pokemon Yellow and Metal Gear, I'm gonna go with Pokemon Yellow here to move on. Uh, I like Metal Gear, sure, but Pokemon Yellow and Pokemon just in general was took over the world and took over my Game Boy for a very long time. So Pokemon Yellow is what is moving on and yeah. that next matchup is going to be interesting. Cool. So that is what I went with there. So for the next one, uh, I have Super Mario World versus Super Mario 64. So I have Mario beating himself up in the face. <laughs> he's, he has two of his games going up, pitting up against each other here. And 
Um, I think out of these two, I probably am gonna go with Super Mario World. Super Mario 64 is cool and all, and it's like, yeah, one of the you know, I, I it's it's just a tough choice to pick between these two, but I think ultimately, like, you got to go with the OG, you know, like as good as Super Mario 64 is, you got to go with the OG, and uh, yeah, I'm going with Super Mario World out of the two, so that's my gotcha. that's that's my pick. That's what I'm going with. What is your uh, next matchup? So, so my matchup is Sonic the Hedgehog versus Super Mario 64. Now, I love Sonic. I respect the Hedgehog. But <laughs> I played Mario 64 so much as a kid. So much more than that little blue bastard. So we're going to move <laughs> on. The Super Mario 64 is advancing. All right. All right. <laughs> Uh, respect to the hedgehog though respect, respect the hedgehog nice uh, <laughs> alright <clears throat> so next matchup uh, for me is going to be uh, Super Smash Bros. Melee versus Age of Empires 2 um, this one is interesting because it's two very different style of games you have a fighting game and an RTS, both of which I have played. But I think ultimately I have to go with the one that I spent more time with and the one that I have like pretty fond memories of playing with other people like family and friends and that kind of stuff. And that is out of the two, I'm going with Super Smash Bros. Melee. I, Age of Empires 2, I like you, but I'm going to be real. I played more Galactic uh, 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 Battlegrounds than I did you. So, uh, <laughs> out of the two, I gotta go with Super Smash Bros. Melee, baby. So that's that's my choice. Hey, uh, my next matchup is Super Smash Bros. Melee versus Age of Empires Two, and I'm gonna have to go with the one I played the most with, which was Age of Empires Two. There you uh, go. I love Smash. Smash is a lot of fun with your friends, but I didn't play it a hell of a whole lot. Um. So, but I did play a shitload of Age of Empires. So, Age of Empires, you are going forward. Very nice, very nice. All right, cool. So you have your pick in. I have mine. Moving on to the next matchup. So, for me, the next one is Mortal Kombat versus GTA Five. I believe that's the same for you, correct? It is. It is the same matchup. All right. So this is like probably the only one where we have the same matchup. Uh, and I'm going with GTA 5. I'm going uh, with Mortal, Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Mort uh, there you go. Different, different, different choice. I like that. I like that. Let's go, dude. Different, yeah. different choices. I I gotta go GTA 5. I just I prefer I I, I like GTA 5 more. I I played it more. I just prefer that 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 style of game more than I do Mortal Kombat. So that's that's why I'm going with that. Uh, yeah, that's 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 my pick. I uh, I love GTA 5, and it was a good run. But Mortal Kombat, just, uh, you know, I play it with anybody. I play it at home. I played it a lot. I played most of the games. I played them by myself. I played the fucking Sub-Zero Mythologies Mortal Kombats. I played, I've played all the Mortal Kombats. I like the lore of Mortal Kombat. All that stuff is weighted against GTA V. And to me, Mortal Kombat just comes out ahead there for me, personally. So that is my choice. I do enjoy GTA V, though. That is totally, you know, totally fair. Respect. Respect to those guys. Exactly. 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 All right. So next, this is going to be the final one for the top bracket. Um, And that is, for me, Red Dead Redemption versus uh, Assassin's Creed 2, which is a tough one because I like both of these games a lot. Um, I like both these games quite a bit. But I think ultimately, when I really think about it, when I really boil down, when it goes down to it, um, a lot more of my love and um, just for me, like out of the two choices, I have to go with Red Dead Redemption. I really like Assassin's Creed 2. Again, I love that game. I love Red Dead Redemption more, though. <laughs> you know, like out of the two, I just, I, I gotta go with Red Dead, man. Like, it's 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 a tough choice, but it, when you have to make a choice, you got to go with the one you love more, right? 
So I, for me, it's Red Dead Redemption. I got to go with Red Dead over Assassin's Creed 2. All right. Uh, I had the same two games, Assassin's Creed 2 versus Red Dead Redemption here. And yeah. uh, I love, I, I'm pretty much the same reasoning as Daniel. I'm going to have to move ahead with Red Dead Redemption in this particular category. Um, I enjoyed that journey from beginning to end of John Marston's story. And, uh, you know, there's not a lot of, I don't, I'm, I'm like, as I got older, I got more emotional, but I played Red Dead Redemption when I was young and that story made me emotional as a young lad when I was a young warthog. But, um, uh, the, uh, that one just had such a strong impact on me and uh, I, I, we still talk about it to this day. So it is a uh, moving ahead, mm -hmm. uh, here. Uh, and that is my reasoning for uh, that. Okay. All right. Well, there's our top bracket filled out. Now we move on to the last one of the bottom bracket, which for me is Portal 2 versus KOTOR. And uh, this one to me is an easy one. I got to go with KOTOR. Because uh, <laughs> for you, I know it's a tough choice. But for me, it's an easy one. Uh, Star Wars Knights of the Republic is my easy choice. I like Portal 2. Playing it, I, I mean, I'm usually not a puzzle person, kind of you know, puzzle game kind of person, but I like enjoyed that one because I played it with a, a friend and it was a good time. But yeah, Kotor easily for me in this one. Uh, Kotor is is Kotor, so yeah. Josh, this, you have to make you have to make the difficult choice. Now, I right? have to make a hard choice here, man. I have Mass Effect Two versus Kotor. Both of them are Bioware games. Uh, Mass Effect Two is absolutely my personal favorite out of the entire Mass Effect series. The music, the characters, the story, absolute top tier. KOTOR is Star Wars. It is being a Jedi in a video game and making choices between the light side and the dark side. Uh, it is falling in love with those characters and their stories. Um... So I'm having to... I still haven't made my decision yet, which is why I'm talking so much. <laughs> no, hey, man. <laughs> Talk about it, dude. Maybe it'll uh, help you make your decision, dude. Like, I don't know. Um, this, this is what um, this prime is for. This is your time. Go. Go ahead. And in some ways, they're similar in a lot of ways, you know, with the... Uh, you got a ship and a crew and a big giant party members and this giant threat that you're dealing with uh, facing a lot of destruction and... And, and things like that. I think I've made my decision, though, and it is going to be KOTOR. Um, and uh, just because, like, the nostalgia is going to win out on it, I, and I just enjoy the story just a tinch more, the characters just a little bit more. Like, but my God, what a hard choice that was, guys. I I was struggling. <laughs> I struggled here. But it's made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's made. It's KOTOR's moving on. Moving on. Moving on. Moving on to KOTOR. That Very might nice. be the hardest decision I've ever had to make in my life. Holy shit. Uh, nice. In terms of video games. Cool. Oh my goodness. I'm Very excited nice. to see how, how different our brackets are now. <laughs> so, well, again, we're going to do a recap. We're going to go ahead and do a recap, right? Of, 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 this, of round two, since we're now done. Uh since we're now done with with that so let me without any further ado let's go ahead and get on let's get it on on that so round two we have first matchup for me was witcher 3 versus god of war that was probably the toughest choice i had to make and it was the first one that i had to make ultimately i had to go with god of war but but god what a what a difficult decision that was but yeah i had to go with god of war um Matchup number two for me was um, Last of Us versus Borderlands 2. I went with The Last of Us. Uh, actually, well, fuck. Let me, let me go in order here because that's what we did last time. The Witcher 3 versus God of War. I went with God of War. Minecraft versus Chrono Trigger. I went with Minecraft. Super Smash Bros. Melee versus Age of Empires 2. I went with Super Smash Bros. Assassin's Creed 2 versus Red Dead. I'd go with Red Dead. Portal 2 versus KOTOR, I went with KOTOR. Mortal Kombat versus GTA 5, I went with GTA 5. Super Mario World versus Super Mario 64, I went with Super Mario World. And then we have Borderlands 2 versus The Last of Us. And 
this. So that's my uh, that is my uh, round two recap. All right. Josh, go ahead. My my round two recap is as follows. It was Witcher versus Doom 1993. I went with The Witcher 3, which moved on. And next up, we had Pokemon Yellow versus Metal Gear. I ended up going with uh, with Pokemon Yellow, moving on. Next up after that was Super Smash Melee versus uh, Age of Empires 2. I ended up going with Age of Empires 2. Uh, next up was Assassin's Creed 2 versus Red Dead Redemption. We went with Red Dead Redemption. After that, we had Mass Effect 2 versus KOTOR, the hardest choice I've ever made in the video game since. We ended up <laughs> going with KOTOR. After that, we had Mortal Kombat versus GTA 5. I went ahead with Mortal Kombat. Um, damn right, and I'm excited for that movie. Um, after that, we had Sonic the Hedgehog versus Super Mario 64. We ended up going with Super Mario 64, but respect the hedgehog, always. Um, <laughs> respect the hedgehog, there you go. Uh -huh. And uh, finally, we had Borderlands 2 versus Kingdom Hearts. We went ahead with Borderlands 2. Round go. three. Fight. Round three, fight. Yes, exactly. <laughs> All right, round three. Here we go. We're we're only down to a few games now. Uh, so my first matchup is God of War versus Minecraft, and this is an easy choice for me. I'm going God of War 2018. It's just a masterpiece. Minecraft is a fun game to play with friends, and but that's like as far as it goes for me, you know. Yeah, when you're comparing the two, God of War is simply a masterpiece, and it, it, yeah, there's there's no competition. I'm sorry, Mike, there's no competition. <laughs> uh, I have The Witcher Three versus Pokemon Yellow, and this is no competition. I'm sorry, Pokemon Yellow, <laughs> Witcher Three all the way pushes through. Yep. To the next that round. Makes sense. Next matchup, I have The Last of Us versus Super Mario World. And again, I'm going with The Last of Us because, I mean, again, it's just uh, uh, these choices are uh, uh, getting, um, I don't know if they're getting easier, but like some of when you make certain picks in, in these matchups, you're like, all right, I know which one I'd choose between these two. Right? Yeah. So yeah. I go, yeah, Last of Us for me between that and Super Mario World. Uh, I just, yeah, I mean, it's Super Mario World is fine and all, but Last of Us is The Last of Us. I have Super Mario 64 versus Borderlands 2. I'm going to go with Borderlands 2 here. Um, I had more fun with that. I love S Super Mario 64. Respect the plum. Respect the plumber, but uh, <laughs> respect the hedgehog and respect the plumber. There you go. Uh, you know, tip them well. They work on your pipes. Um, <laughs> make that uh, make that trend on Twitter. Respect the plumber and respect the hedgehog. Respect the hedgehog. Remember, uh, always respect the hedgehog. There you go. Yeah, always respect your hedgehog. Uh, Borderlands yeah, yeah. two, moving on. Uh, had way more fun right. with that. Next matchup for me is Super Smash Bros. Melee versus Red Dead Redemption. And again, I like Super Smash Bros. Melee. It's a cool game to play with friends and to fight whenever I feel like playing the fighting game and all that stuff. But no contest. Red Dead Redemption uh, takes the cake. Uh, fairly easily uh, in this matchup. So so far, this round is not like I know I know what I'm choosing in each of these matchups so far. Right. So yeah, Red Dead over Melee. So yeah. All right. I have Age of Empires two versus Red Dead Redemption. It's gonna be Red Dead Redemption all the way this time. Uh, setting up for a grudge match next round. <laughs> like it's gonna be real hard <laughs> <laughs> between these next two. Um. I know what you uh, mean. I have yeah. I have a difficult choice next round as well. Um, but yeah, I just love Red Dead Redemption so much, man. I've I've I've, I've uh, touted its praises previously. We both have. It's yeah. a hell. It's a it's a contender. For uh, sure, absolutely. Um, next up, I have Kotor versus GTA Five, and as much as I like GTA Five. Kotor uh, wins this one because it's Kotor. So Knights of the Republic gets the edge on GTA 5 on this one. GTA 5, you're a really good game, but Knights of the Republic is just on another level. I'm sorry. And 
indeed. On this matchup, I also have KOTOR versus Mortal Kombat. I love Mortal Kombat. It's been with me since I was a wee lad. It's still with me even today. Um, but so is KOTOR. And, uh, <laughs> and I still think about it every year that passes, waiting for that remaster, remake, or whatever. I want that um, remake so bad. So uh, bad. Um, so KOTOR is in my heart and in my mind a lot. So it is moving on with respect to yes. Mortal Kombat. All right, so that that is that's our four uh, you know four matchups there. So let's do a little bit of a recap. Number one for me was God of War twenty eighteen versus Minecraft. God of War twenty eighteen takes the cake. Uh, Super Smash Bros Melee versus Red Dead Redemption. Red Dead Redemption wins. Uh, Knights of the Republic versus GTA five. Kotor takes the win. And then Last of Us versus Super Mario World. I got to go with the Last of Us. All right. Uh, first up, I had The Witcher versus Pokemon Yellow. The Witcher moved on quite easily. Next up, we had Age of Empires 2 versus Red Dead Redemption. Red Dead Redemption took the crown here. Uh, KOTOR versus Mortal Kombat. It was a tough fought victory, but KOTOR won out in the end. And Super Mario 64, respect the plumber, but Borderlands 2 went ahead in this respect position. Respect the plumber. I'm going to make sound bites for this later. <laughs> Respect the plumber. Respect. Respect the plumber. All right. Okay. This, this, this Jesus is, Christ. This, this, is where, this is where it gets so hard for me, dude. Because I don't know what the hell I'm going to choose here. So I'm going to tell you my two matchups. I, we're, on, we're in the last two matchups here. Or, we're, we're in the last three, rather. We're in, we're in, we're in round four. And uh, I have... God of War 2018 going up against Red Dead Redemption. And God, that's such a hard choice. They're so good. They're both so good. Ah. And then for my other uh, one, I have Knights of the Republic versus The Last of Us. So those are my two. Uh, Josh, if you want to go ahead and name off your matchups. I have uh, Witcher versus Red Dead Redemption. Fuck me sideways. That's going to be hard. Um, and the, the the only other matchup after that will be KOTOR versus Borderlands 2. Uh, shit. Fuck me sideways. That, that Witcher versus Red Dead Redemption pick is gonna be real hard. Oh, for me, Red Dead versus God of War, I... God damn. Oh, I don't know what to choose, man. So this, So here we go. This is it. God of War versus Red Dead Redemption. I have to make a choice. And even though I don't want to, I have to. That's how brackets work. That's how knockout things work. Um, I love both of these games very, very much. I think that um, uh, I, I like the the characters in the story and every and gameplay and everything for both of these is top tier. I um spent uh many a good time on 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 these but i think ultimately i spent more time on one of these games and i've replayed it multiple times and i just will never forget the time of my life when i played this game because it was it was it was an interesting time but i just i i have so much nostalgia for this game that i even though I, I'm I gotta go with Red Dead Redemption, man. I love God of War 2018, but I have just so much nostalgia and so much like good like vibes for both of these games, but I think I just the nostalgia factor wins out for me in Red Dead Redemption. Hey man. Because that's that's an older it's a 2010 game. I remember the time when I played that and what was going on and stuff, and it just it takes me back to to, to 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 the days of, of, of that and I, I again not to say that I didn't love the God of War 2018 but just it's a tough choice man and and sometimes nostalgia wins out and in this case it certainly did so yeah I love you God of War 2018 but I just have way more time in in Red Dead Redemption the original um hell of a game and now 
<clears throat> as Daniel was sitting here talking over his picks, I was sitting here looking over mine, which are Witcher 3 versus Red Dead Redemption. And uh, I'm having a hard time with it, boys. It's, it's a tough choice. <laughs> it's, it's a very, it's an extremely tough choice. I've had several tough choices in this bracket so far. And this one was one of them. I, I, it, it was like down to the wire. I was like, should I, I, I got a war? Uh, but, but ultimately, I just, Red Dead for me just wins it out uh, by a bit um, for what I said and all that. Mm hmm. But yeah, I, God of War is incredible, though. But anyway, I, I, you have to make a choice, so you got you got to go with something, right? You do, you do. And I was sitting here, and I was thinking, I was weighing all these out, and I'm like, The Witcher is a a combination of, it's a trilogy of games, right? Like it's everything is is kind of led up to this moment with this character, and this is kind of like his last hurrah. Um, Red Dead Redemption is we meet John Marston. We're hunting down the old gang. We're we're trying to rescue his family, Jack and Abigail, and and uh, that's one of the greatest. Personally, I think one of the greatest endings of all time. To it's, it, it's a crazy, it's a wild ending. It's a wild um, ending. but I also think The Witcher has some uh great moments. The Battle of Kaer Morhen, um, mm -hmm. the the fantastic fucking music, and that goes for both these games. When I say fantastic fucking music, Witcher. Three and Red Dead Redemption had some of the greatest music of any game. When you go to Mexico for the first time is in Red Dead Redemption and that song plays. Um, when the ending song plays, when just so many so much great music and so much so many great characters in both of these games. I don't make this decision lightly. It is a very hard decision to make. I'm gonna have to go with The Witcher Three here. Ooh, okay. it it hurts. It hurts. But either one of them would hurt. It, like like picking either one of them hurts, one way or another. Uh, but Witcher Three comes out just just a hair, just a smidge, a smidge, guys. Ahead, just a smidge. Not no, very much. I, I get it. It's it's these are these are tough choices that need to be made, man. Oof, oof. That was as hard as that Mass Effect Two Kotor pick. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Hey man, that's that's just that's the way that's the way it is. That's the way it man. is, bro. Uh, oh fuck, that's funny, man. Yeah, that's just uh, yeah. We we we're, we we get stuck with with difficult choices, but you you gotta you gotta find it within yourself to 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 to, to pull through and 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 do it. Uh, all right. So my next uh one here is Knights of the Republic versus The Last of Us. And uh, I like The Last of Us, but Knights of the Republic uh, gets the gets the easy win on this one for me. Yeah, I mean, to move uh, Red Dead Redemption versus Knights of the Republic for me in the finale. That is my final matchup. Josh, go ahead and uh, do your. Uh, my final your matchup is Kotor versus Borderlands Two. Again, it's a known contest. No contest for Kotor here going forward. Um, you know, I, I respect Borderlands, you know, they're, they're, they're a worthy opponent. Respect but... your, uh, your blood wing or whatever. Uh, yeah, res res and... respect the, respect the lands that border you. Um, <laughs> respect, respect uh, your ride that you're going to catch. Uh, yeah, exactly right. Uh, uh but KOTOR so moves yeah. on here, man. It moves on. It's the finale, right. which is not an easy choice for me. Yeah, it's Actually. some of these have been pretty tough, but I think, yeah, I mean, I just, oh god, some of these matchups have been really difficult. So, so what's your what's your final what's your championship match here? What do you got? In, I got the Witcher three versus Knights of the Old Republic. Ooh, okay. I have Red Dead Redemption versus Knights of the Old Republic. Um, do you want to go first or should I? I I have to think on mine. <laughs> you have to think on yours. Okay, I'll I'll go first because. As much as I love both of these games, I, you guys know me, and if you do, you know that uh, my champion is going to be Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. I love Red Dead Redemption, but Knights of the Republic, you guys know, if you know me, you know that I'm a Star Wars guy, so uh, I kind of maybe spoiled uh, my winner earlier in the uh, bracket by something that I said, but yeah, I just... 
Kotor, man. Kotor is Kotor is the one for me. That is my champion. I, Star Wars: Knights of the Republic is my overall winner. There were some really difficult choices that I had to make in this bracket. Um, I I really do wonder how differently this would have gone if there was like if like Kotor wasn't in here or like if there was like some different options, you know. But I mean, that's just a whole lot, a lot of what ifs. But uh, yeah, that's that's my bracket. Uh, Kotor is my winner through all these. Uh, it was so again. Some of these were really difficult. The Witcher Three versus God of War was tough. God of War versus Red Dead Redemption was tough. Uh, some of these were just it, it, Red Dead versus Assassin's Creed Two was rough. Like there's just there was a lot of really tough choices. But ultimately, you got to do. There there must be a winner. There has to be a champion. So yeah, yeah. That's that's uh, what I went with. Uh, before Josh, you have uh, you have yours. Before I announce my champion. I'm going to tell Daniel that I want to do more of these brackets because this was a lot of fun. <laughs> we can. We for sure can. Because <laughs> I definitely want to do more of these. This is a lot of great... This is fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, we definitely can. I think, I think what we should do for next time is since I kind of did this one, you can do the next one. Hell yeah. We could do that. And then, um, yeah, we'll do it that way. But anyway. This is, the, this is the first time we've done this, by the way. And next time we will try to make it like a little bit easier to view. I'll try to get it all set up so it's easier to see things and our choices as well. Somehow. We'll come up with some way that you guys yeah. can can kind of follow along um so for the finale i had the witcher 3 versus knights of the old republic mm -hmm. now i struggled really early on with the kotor versus mass effect 2 um uh match matchup mm -hmm. anybody who knows me knows that i am also a star wars guy so the champion is going to be knights of the old republic um, there we go oh hey look at that there you uh, go. Two two we have, crowns. We have we have the we have a double coat tour victory here. Uh -huh. Very nice. It is it So I love The Witcher 3 and I love Geralt and I, Same. I do love too. those characters. Yeah. Um yeah, I love everything about that game. But it has not stuck with me the same way that Kotor has since I was a kid. You know, since I was young and 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 met Trask Olgo for the first time and met uh uh Carthonasi and Bastila Shan for the first time. Yeah, your boy Trask Olgo, his hero champion of the Republic. Or... I mean it really is. Put some respect on my boy Trask. Mm. But uh. um you know, uh, even now when I watch other people play it and they wake up on the Indar Spire for the first time, and you see the the very first, you, you fight some Sith troopers, and you go down a hallway, and you see a Jedi in combat with a Sith, and they're fighting each other, and there's an explosion, and they both die. When I see that moment for the, for, for her, whoever's streaming this KOTOR, whenever I see them, and I see that moment, I'm instantly a kid again. I'm instantly <laughs> in Star Wars. I'm instantly like, Oh, am I gonna get a lightsaber this early off his body? Oh man, there's not one here. Shit, you know, like I nothing has ever stuck with me as much as Knights of the Old Republic has. Um, yeah, it's so it's, it's it is just the something champ. else, man. Kotor hits different, man. It does. It really, really does. Yeah, it, it just it it it's uh yeah, man. I, I don't know. I just. It's just one of those games, man. And and there's a lot of good games in this bracket, and it could have it could have gone, you know, a bunch of different stuff. But I just, yeah, man. E even after all these years, Kotor is still just I, I mean, shit. I fucking there's they, they they're still making like Kotor stuff to this day. Like GameStop the other day announced uh GameStop and Funko announced like a a Kotor box that has like Bastila and Jedi Revan. I'm like, I gotta snatch that shit up. Before it goes out of stock, or you know, I can't get it anymore, because they had done a, a a Darth Revan pop that I wanted to get, and that motherfucker sold out real quick, and he's like over a hundred bucks right now. So I'm like, I can't let this happen again. So I had to snatch me that snatch up that uh that Bastila and Jedi Revan box, because I'm like, I, I I I I need it, bro. I need it. I love me Kotor, man. Mm -hmm. Give me all the Kotor merch, dude. I, I love it. I love that we're finally getting some some Kotor merch after, even after all these years, it's still around, man. But uh, but yeah, that's uh, 
that's my uh th- those that's our bracket everyone those are that's what we went with uh definitely let us know what yours is uh i'm very i'm curious to see what you guys have in your brackets how you filled out your thing uh yeah definitely definitely hit us up on twitter hit us up on the discord uh i'm very curious to see how you guys would uh what's your personal take on on all these uh on all these games again i i I went through and uh got a list of like some of the best games of all time i put them in a randomizer and made the bracket and that's how we that's how we got here so uh yeah We'll definitely uh, Josh enjoyed doing this and I did as well. So we'll definitely. Be oh my doing God. Some it, was, more, it was so much fun. It was so much fun. Let me, let me just brag on this a minute for how much fun this was being forced to choose between two things that you love was terrible and exciting <laughs> and, and so much fun to do it. I enjoyed every minute of it. We'll definitely have to do more of these. Like we can do like, uh, you know other game ones or tv show ones or, or movie ones I, fucking character ones yeah care fucking. whatever like <laughs> there's, 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 there's you can make a bracket off anything but yeah we'll definitely have to do something like this in the future i enjoyed doing this hope you guys enjoyed watching uh definitely uh fill out your own if you can and let us know uh what, what your picks are and yeah we'll we'll we'll, we'll you know check them out and be curious to see what you guys have on there because everybody's everybody's different man everybody's got their own tastes and likes and experiences mm-hmm. so yeah definitely thanks for watching and thanks for listening uh it's been a it's been a fun one it's been a fun fun yeah. fun episode absolutely um i will post my list in daniel's discord on the, in the clockwork cantina channel if you want to see like my actual photo of uh it um I will also put it out on Twitter for anybody that wants to see that. So make sure to follow on Twitter if you want to see my bracket list. Uh, I'm sure Daniel will probably do the same. Of his. Yeah. Um, uh, that's a show, guys. I do believe that, um, if sure you're late, is. if you're late to the show, I want I will, I want to reiterate that the Clockwork Cantina is now available on Spotify. So if you, yeah, um, if Shout you out to have it an RSS feed, right. If you uh, listen to the MP3 version of this uh, or are in the chat now and and want to, please, please, please go follow us on Spotify and give some of those older shows a listen. I know they can be a little rough audio-wise, but let us know. Um, uh, Going forward, the MP3s should show up on there at least by tomorrow. I think Spotify says they update once a day. At least that's what I was read. so when the MP3 goes up there, it'll be on Spotify. Um, so please make sure to follow it there. And also follow the channel here as well. All right, let's do our goodbyes, yeah. Daniel. All righty. So thank you, everybody, for uh, for joining us. I appreciate it. Uh, again, shout out to Josh for, uh, first of all, for setting up the RSS feed and getting the, getting us on Spotify and all that good stuff. All the credit goes to him for that. He He made it happen. Yesterday he was he was working his ass off doing that all day. So give him give him the 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 shout outs and the love and all that stuff for that because he 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 made that happen. And then uh, yeah, it was a good episode, fun episode, man. I, I enjoyed uh, filling out the bracket and all that stuff. Uh, tomorrow coming up for stream for me tomorrow, we uh, are going to be starting Tomb Raider, the new Tomb Raider, the the reboot, the 2013 one. I'm oh, very man. excited to play that because I've heard good things about it. I know that the the most recent movie with Alicia Vikander was based off of these new games. I hadn't played them though, but we're that's going to change tomorrow because we're going to play that tomorrow. Very excited to start a new game now that we beat Control. And uh, yeah, man, that's that's going to be real cool. Uh, and then thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody who helped me achieve my goal of thirty warriors for the raid Shadow Legends campaign that I was doing on my stream. I really appreciate everybody who participated in that. I'm forever grateful and thankful for you guys for that, for helping me complete the main, the goal, the, the maximum goal of 30. I didn't think we'd reach it, but thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, and yeah, I'm just uh, looking forward to uh, to watching some uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. By this, by, by this time next week, we'll have seen the first episode. Uh, and yeah, man, just uh, go watch Ryan, The Last Dragon if you haven't. It's a 
top tier Disney movie. If you if you haven't seen that as well, uh, just came out. But it, it to me, are it's already one of the one of the best movies they've ever done. Uh, so yeah, I just uh, yeah, I I I, I love the movie and uh, yeah, thank you everybody. Again, Tomb Raider tomorrow. Hope to see you guys there. Follow us on the Spotify, on the uh, YouTube, on the on all the all the stuff here on the side and the bottom. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next week. Peace out. Thanks for watching, everybody, and listening. Bye bye. All right, guys. Um, hello. Uh, thank you to everybody that showed up here today. Um, we, I, I think we are definitely going to be sticking with the Monday uh, podcast going forward for now. Um, our viewership is a lot, a lot. It's more. It's better than it was. It is on the weekends. So, um, uh, shout out to Daniel for making the bracket uh, for the uh, for this matchup. Um, he worked. I know he worked on that and worked his butt off on that. So kudos to him and much appreciation from me to him and hopefully from you guys to him as well. Um, coming up, D and D is still on break uh, for a little while as I kind of recharge my brain and imagination and all that stuff. Um, so that's not coming back for a little bit. Um, but I am going to set up some one shots and, and things here. Probably I'm going to work on it. I'm going to work on that this week. Uh, since I worked on uh, the Spotify stuff yesterday, I'm going to work on D and D stuff and one shot stuff and city of mist stuff this week. And then that will uh, be, I'll let you guys know all about that. And possibly some streams coming up. Uh, maybe some Fall Guys streams. Maybe. You know, just to kill some time. Maybe some Loop Hero. That's kind of fun to play. Um, uh, and and just shout out to the Clockwork Cantina for achieving one of its goals within the time limit that we kind of set. Not really set, but was like, you know what? This time next year, I want to be on Spotify. And we achieved that. Um... And, you know, when Daniel and I started this show almost two years ago now, almost two years ago, um, uh, I never thought we'd get to this point, really. Like, I'm shocked and amazed every time we do a show and people show up and listen to us and take part in the discussion and all that stuff. Like, I can't tell you what joy it brings me. Like, it truly, really does. Um, so thank you to the viewers, to the listeners. We love you guys. That's going to do it us for us here today on the Clockwork Cantina. And we will see you next week with another topic, more news, and a hell of a good time. Bye-bye, guys.